Uh, so that part of it, I guess you'd say, is, is comforting. And, you know, looking at that log jam, that just kind of speaks to how this district's played out this year and how tough this district is. There's no doubt. It, it does not surprise me to the least uh, because I knew when, when this district was drawn up, you know, regardless, there's going to be some very good football teams not, not in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, playing well at, the, you know, at certain times of the year with, with, uh, with some of the restriction stuff that's gone on this year and missing kids, you know, teams missing kids weekly. Uh, you never know, and there's just some really good teams that are just battling right there in the middle. Uh, so this Friday night, uh, you know, kind of shaping up to be very interesting. Coach, as always, we appreciate the time. Wish you the best of luck. I appreciate it. Thank you. College Station Cougar head coach Steve Huff as the Cougars get ready to take on the Magnolia West Mustangs. We're going to step aside. When we come back, Scott and I will continue to get you ready for kickoff. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Howdy, Dave South here from my friends Chris and Clint Willis with local Aggie-owned and operated Willis Custom Homes. Whether you're looking to build and retire in Aggie Land, need a larger home for your growing family, or want to build your very first home, trust the 15-plus years of construction experience that Willis Custom Homes can bring to your project. Custom homes, metal buildings, and barn dominiums are their specialty. Visit WillisHomesTX.com today. Need to purchase equipment before the end of this year for tax purposes? ASAP Equipment sells ASV track skid steers, Yanmar mini excavators, and commercial zero-turn mowers from Bad Boy, Gravely, and Hustler. ASAP Equipment also rents the equipment you need to get your winter projects done. If you've been waiting for the perfect time to buy or rent equipment, the time is now and the best deals are only at ASAP Equipment. Hurry in, the year is almost over and units are limited. Call John Jarvis at 979-690-1106 or click ASAPEquip.com for more info today. One, two. I'm in love with a man named Rudy. I'm okay with that. He knows exactly what I want. He keeps me coming back. He cooks breakfast, lunch, and dinner for me. He does the dishes too. I'm in love with a man named Rudy. Last name Barbecue. It sure is easy to fall in love with Rudy's tasty oak smoked barbecue. Next in line. Oh no, here they come again. Careful, please. Ow, ow, ouchie. Hello? This is your floor speaking. After 20 years of hard work, I need to call Zwarneman Flooring so that I can retire. If your old floors are talking to you, call Zwarneman Flooring at 979-776-2800, click zfloors.net, or stop by our new showroom. We look forward to working with you to update your home and help those old floors finally retire. Welcome back to Cougar Stadium, where tonight it's your College Station Cougars against the Magnolia West Mustangs. Team who brings one of the biggest inflatables I've seen in quite some time <laughs> to the field. Scott, you told me about it. You had seen yeah. it before. Told me about it. Uh, that's a pretty good size inflatable over there. It, it certainly is, um, you know, but, you know, we've... Uh uh, we there's one that's bigger. I can't remember where it's from, but you know, you remember Sealy had a pretty big one too. Yeah, Sealy did when we were covering yeah, the Minnesota. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, it it really ain't the size of the inflatable in the in the team. It's more the size of the fight in the inflatable. I guess I, I would have been more worried if they had a paper banner. Okay. Okay. So let's get that off. But it is senior <laughs> night, and the players are coming on the field. And, um, you know, I, this is an exciting night. I mean, I know they have one more home game, which has kind of changed the last three years. That uh, You know, but two years ago, uh, the Cougars had to go up to a Mesquite because they were the third-place yep. team yep. and had to play a Poteet up there. So you've earned the uh, right to, be a, a, to host that home game. And, you know, considering how they've kind of messed up uh, high school – to split them before the playoffs and have such big districts, it is nice that you get to, if you're one of the top two teams to play at home. Yeah, that is one of the benefits this year is uh, the top two teams get to play at home and College Station, as we said, has sealed up that number two spot. Don't know the time yet for the game. Not quite sure the opponent. Uh, originally, the thought was it's Sherman, but it could change. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's it, you it, know, it, Lufkin, uh, I mean, Longview's a prohibitive yeah. favorite over uh, uh, Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you're, you're going to Tyler to play Play at Rose Stadium. Uh, stranger things have happened. And they also, Longview knows they're playing next week. This is it for, for Tyler. 
this is they're not in the playoffs. Right. So, uh, you know, tough district up there and uh, not going to be one of the four teams. So uh, after, you know, having their playoffs in last year on this field, uh, Tyler's not even going to be in the playoffs this year. Yeah, so if things shake out like we think they will, it will be Sherman next week. The Bearcats, I've already looked that up, uh, and, uh, they'll be coming to town. And the tentative start time and everything, if it were Sherman, is Saturday at 2 o'clock here at Cougar Stadium. But as we said, that's all still up in the air. We should know more as the evening goes on. But tonight, College Station taking on the Magnolia West Mustangs. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. And our starting lineups are brought to you by Balboa's Barber Studio. Get the best haircut by the best barbers in the Brazos Valley at Balboa's Barber Studio. Book online and never wait for a haircut or shave again at Balboa's Barber Studio.com. All right, I'm going to take a look at the uh, Cougar offense as they run onto the field. Right tackle, Owen Gibson. Right guard, Richard Mata. The center, Cade Farrer. Uh, left guard is Tyler Christensen. Left tackle is Corey Hendricks. Uh, at the R receiver is Cash Richter. X is uh, Dalton Carnes. Uh, Z is going to be Houston Thomas. And the Y will be Traylon Sewell. The running back, the starter, will be Roderick Brown. Uh, that's one of your seniors. There's only uh, four, uh, three seniors in your starting offense. And then starting at quarterback is going to be Jet Huff. Uh, Shrimp to uh, punt and uh, do extra points. And uh, Trimble is going to be your kickoff man. At your Cougar offense, let's take a look at the Cougar defense across the front, front line. You're going to have junior Connor Lindgren. Senior Isaac Almarez, junior Caleb Scow. Then your linebackers, you're going to have junior Jackson Slanker, senior Bubba Carter, senior Lucas Sampson, and sophomore Harrison Robinson. And then your defensive backs, sophomore Zamarian Lofton, junior Byron Johnson, senior Keyshawn Cooper, and junior Denim Day. That's your Cougar defense. And we want to let you know, last week we went off the air. There was an injury to one of the Cougar players. It, as everybody knows, it was Kyle Walsh. We do want to report, Coach told me yesterday that he is doing well, and so we're happy to hear that, but we still send our best wishes out to Kyle and his family. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a, a tough situation, especially for us when we thought it was Kyle Walsh, but, you know, I, before they got the uniform off, I couldn't confirm that, so uh, err on the side of caution as far as reporting that. Hopefully that, uh, you know, that uh, the families of those that didn't go to the game, it puts them in a position where not knowing if it's one of their children children as well so but uh, you know that's that's how we had to, to call it last week but he is okay we're going to step aside as they play the national anthem when we come back we'll have the coin toss and kickoff you're listening to cougar football on maverick 100.9 Daily Company is the electrical, HVAC, and plumbing company you... Scott, could you turn your back down a little more? You're still coming pretty hot. It's with trustworthy techs who are screened and tested for your safety and peace of mind. When you call to schedule a service with Daily Company... FSAGraysonJohnsonDICProsperityBankUSA.com. Captains are making their way onto the field for the coin toss. Your captains tonight for the College Station Cougars. You're going to have Roderick Brown, Jet Huff, Keyshawn Cooper, Will Henson, Kyle Walsh is not here tonight as we said he's not going to go out as one of the captains and then jackson slanker and going out for the actual coin toss is going to be jet huff as you know during this time of COVID, only one player is allowed to go out and for the magnolia west mustangs it's going to be number five going out there for the coin toss that's brady digert 
and it looks like they are. Uh, have they already had the coin toss, Scott? No, they just flipped just the flipped coin. It. Okay, so they're just discussing it. And let's. Uh, we're waiting to see who's going to do what. College Station has won the toss and deferred. Here, we'll let you listen to the referee. Mag West will receive. Good luck, gentlemen. So College Station's defense will be on the field first. They'll get their test against this Magnolia West offense, which last week threw for over 400 yards. And uh, it comes in, as we said, an injury to their top running back. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle this tonight against College Station. Yeah, and I think that, you know, one of the things about what the Cougars going to see in the playoffs uh, that you know the the region two is as tough as we've talked about. Still five teams in the top ten from region two. Uh, you know one of those is a matchup tonight of uh, Denton Ryan hosting Frisco Lone Star. So uh, the Cougars are going to see uh, I even you know even with a loss Ryan uh, you know who's in the top ten nationally uh, regardless of classification according to Max Preps. Uh, I, I still think that, you know, that's, that the loser out of that game is probably still going to be a top-10 team, team uh, and, you know, after this week. So it, it's, a, it's a big week to, to get yourself ready for the playoffs and then really get after Mag West and make it really difficult for them to get into the playoffs. Magnolia West, all white uniforms with maroon numerals and maroon trim. College Station night, it's blackout. They're wearing the black jerseys. They are wearing gray pants. The black jerseys have white numerals outlined in purple. Back deep to receive four. The Mustangs, Nick Joseph, along with Cody Costello. And the Mustangs will be going from right to left on your radio dial. Sam Trimble ready to get this one started. Puts his foot into it, and we are underway. This kick is going to come down. It's going to hit in the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Mag West will start first and 10 at its own 25. Our first quarter tonight brought to you by Kelly Burt Dozer, your number one excavating contractor. Kelly Burt Dozer, 778-1902, proudly supporting the youth of our community. No win tonight. The American Texas Flags hanging limp there by the uh, field house at the north end of the stadium. So uh, a fast track and no win. Great night for high school football again. Quarterback is number 12, Brock Dalton. In the backfield with him is going to be Joseph, Nick Joseph. And they are going to give it to him. He'll go off the right side. He'll get about a yard or two. And then he stood up and driven back. Give him two on the gain. It'll be second and eight. Yeah, and that's where Bilbo has uh, been such a force for them, running the football, actually leading the district, uh, one of the leaders of district in rushing uh, out by entry. Magnolia West goes quickly. They have two receivers on each side of the formation stacked, and they're looking to throw. Dalton's going to throw deep. He's going to the right side. He's got a receiver, but great coverage. Running stride for stride with the intended receiver, Keyshawn Cooper. And Jeffrey Krupp was the intended receiver, and Cooper there step for step. Yeah, and he's going to come out. Now let's see if they uh, bring a guy in and run him deep again. You know, you make you run that 40-yard sprint and then turn around with a fresh set of legs. But uh, Krupp not being able to catch that. He's got six touchdown uh, receptions this year, and their other wide receiver has 11. So, uh, uh, you know, that passing attack, really good. Third and eight now. Dalton drops back looking to throw. He's going to throw to the left side, and it's too high for the intended receiver. It'll be incomplete. That was intended for number 88, Marcus Collins, and it'll be a three and out for Mac West on their opening possession. Look at Sampson in great position right there uh, and, and using the sideline as an extra defender, and uh, a three and out is exactly what the Cougars uh, wanted to see with this defense. Dalton Cards will be back to receive the kick. The punter is going to be Jeffrey Krupp. And Carnes will stand at his own 41-yard line. Crew puts his foot into it. A good high kick. And calling for and making the fair catch at the 40-yard line is Dalton Carnes. And the Cougars will take over first and 10 at their own 40. College Station football brought to you this season by Aggieland Credit Union. Truly free checking with no minimum balance and no monthly fees. Saved by switching today at AggielandCU.org. And by Blinn College, your college, your future. See how the Cougars get after uh, uh, the... Uh, defense here as uh, you're coming off a night where you gave up 10 yards of carry for over 500 yards uh, last weekend. Jed Huff is the quarterback, takes the snap. He's going to throw out to the right side. He's got Houston Thomas wide open at midfield, and Thomas makes the catch there, goes out of bounds, and it'll be a gain of 10 and a first down on the first play for College Station. Yeah, and that ad pattern, and, and we've seen that really set up the post and the 
uh, some other things for the Cougars. Quickly back to action. They're going to hand it off to Marquise Collins. He'll get about a yard into Magnolia territory, Magnolia West territory, and then be hit and dropped. And it puts it at the 49 of Mag West, brings up second and nine. The Cougars wanting to go tempo. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and both uh, running backs in the uh, backfield. And now Roderick Brown will be beside Huff. Traylon Sewell in motion from right to left. Huff takes a snap, rolls to his left. He's looking to throw. He's got Sewell at the 45, 40, and knocked out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Great job right there. That's not a deep pattern, and since it's not a deep pattern, uh, they got it out of the hands quick, and so that still allows you to go with tempo now from the 38. Right back to the line. One receiver left, two to the right. Take the snap. Give it off to Brown. On the delayed draw, he's going to be hit and dropped. No gain on the play. Good penetration there by the Magnolia West defense. Leading the charge is Mitchell Moore. Loss of maybe half a yard where they mark it, so it'll be second and just over 10. They're really stacking up against the run, and the Cougars taking advantage of that in the passing attack. Huff back to throw under some pressure, and he's going to be dropped for a loss back around the 45-yard line as he couldn't get away from the defense. Yeah, ran a blitz right there and had one extra guy, and that uh, loop for the uh, defensive lineman then went right into the lap of Huff. So third and long now for the Cougars. Shotgun formation for Huff. Brings a receiver in motion. It's Carnes. They're going to run the jet sweep. Looking for a block. He gets one. But he's not going to get a lot of yardage as he'll be pushed out of bounds. A little extracurricular there. No flag, but it was a short gain. Roger Club doing a nice job of chasing Carnes out of bounds. And the Cougars are going to have to bring the punt team on. Yeah, only a two-yard gain there. So you were in great position. And then that sack really takes you out of it. And, uh, you know, on a fourth and 15, you're going to lead to a punt. Uh, dual safety's back to receive this punt. Tremp will be the punter. He'll put his foot into this one. It's a good high kick. It's heading towards the end zone. The defenders are going to let it go, or the receivers, excuse me. It's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. And Magnolia West will have it first and 10 at its own 25-yard line. College Station football brought to you this season by Daily Company, electrical, HVAC, and plumbing services you can count on. Read reviews at dailycompany.net. And by Max Food Mart. Max Food Mart, fill up your tank at three College Station locations on Barron, Rock Prairie, and Welburn Roads. So neither team able to do much on offense with their first possessions. Mag West now takes over first and 10 at its own 20 for its second possession of the game. And it's going to be a handoff to Joseph, and he's going to go off the left side. He's going to fight. Stopped early, but he's able to push forward for a gain of three. Yeah, and just doesn't have quite the wiggle that Bilbo has. So, you know, this is, it does change their offensive rushing attack. It's going to make it second and seven now for Mag West. We've got 847 and counting, no score, first quarter. Dalton in the shotgun formation has Joseph to his left. Takes the snap, hands it off to Dalton, or to Joseph. Joseph looking for room, trying to go from left to right, and he's going to be swarmed in the backfield, and that's going to be a loss back to the 19-yard line, and it'll bring up third and 11. Scout uh, a little bit charge like, there. A little bit like the jet sweep that the Cougars ran, just weren't able to get to the edge. And uh, that's good penetration by the defensive front, but for both teams really has short-circuited some early downs. Third and 11 now for Mag West as we approach eight minutes to go in quarter number one. Shotgun formation for Dalton. Trips to the left, takes the snap. He's looking to the left side. Now he's going to pull it and run, and a flag comes in. He's going to have the first down, but this one's coming back. Where that flag was thrown, it was right at the offensive line, and that's either going to be a hold or a chop block or something along those lines. Yeah, and that's also what gave him the chance to escape, yeah. and that's, uh, you know, that's a penalty that actually impacted the play. So going to move him, move them back inside the 10-yard line, maybe to the 10, half the distance. Holding, offense, number 70. Half the, half the distance to the goal. Set down. So instead of a first down, it'll be third and long as they get Cody Koska on the holding penalty there. Mark it back to the nine-yard line. They need the 30. And it was great coverage by the Cougars there, and the reason why he had uh, pulled it down and did go to the scramble is because they had good coverage downfield. Third and 21 now. And they're going to have a false start here on the receiver on the left side. They had trips left, and the outside receiver took off a little bit too early. 
So that'll drop him back another five yards. Yeah, going backwards, not the way you want to do it. And uh, so you get the now mark it at the five yard line. And there was no hiding that because he was the receiver closest to the referee there and he was right in front of him. So there was no way the referee could miss that one. And that marks it back to about the five. So third and 25 for the Mustangs. Dalt, Dalt in the shotgun, he'll stand in his own end zone. And he's just going to take it himself and run off the right side. And he's going to get a decent gain of about four, but it's going to be well short, and it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, and that's uh, just to give their, their punter some room as he gets it out to the 10-yard line. So uh, the Cougars, by way of the penalty, uh, really get to break this, uh, this offense again. And now you have your punt return in uh, Mustang territory. Crop is the punter. He stands in his own end zone. Carnes back to receive it. The kick is off. A good high kick. This is going to drive Carnes back all the way to his own 42 where he makes the fair catch. That was a nice punt there by Crop. He did that last year too. Crop uh, was a guy that was able to change uh, field position. So, But the Cougars started their last drive at the 40. This time here at the 42. Uh, you'll take that kind of starting position all week, uh, all night long. 48 yards on the punt. 7.16 to go. Quarter number one. We are scoreless. College Station now with its second possession of the game. Start, game starting first and 10. Actually, they mark it at the 43. Huff, shotgun formation, trips right, drops back to pass. He's going to throw to the left. He's got a receiver. It's Carnes, makes the catch at the 49 of Magnolia West and goes out of bounds, and that'll set up second and short. I see this uh, rushing attack get that going as they mark that at the 49-yard line of the Mustangs. Second down and two. Hand it off to, no, fake it to Roderick Brown. Throw over the middle, Traylon Sewell, nobody near him, wide open, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Cougars! Great job splitting twin high safeties. You get to the middle of the field, and then he's running right down the hash marks. No defender inside the hash marks. Took some contact, but really had great momentum carrying it into the end zone for the score. Cougars jump on top on the touchdown pass to Traylon Sewell. On to add the extra point now is Dalton Shrimp out of the hold of Jackson Slanker. The spot, the kick is up. It's good. Your new score was 7.03 to go. College Station 7, Magnolia West 0. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Howdy, Dave South here from my friends Chris and Clint Willis with local Aggie-owned and operated Willis Custom Homes. Whether you're looking to build and retire in Aggie Land, need a larger home for your growing family, or want to build your very first home, trust the 15-plus years of construction experience that Willis Custom Homes can bring to your project. Custom homes, metal buildings, and barn dominiums are their specialty. Visit WillisHomesTX.com today. Well, College Station strikes first on the touchdown pass to Traylon Sewell, and they lead it 7 to nothing. Yeah, that uh, capped a two-play 58-yard touchdown drive, 49 yards on that catch and run, and a uh, great play call right there to take advantage of what you see defensively with two high safeties. Cody Costello and... Nick Joseph back to receive the kickoff for the Mustangs. Joseph on the far side of the field. Costello here on the near side. Sam Tremble will kick it off. Tremble puts his foot into it. This one's going to be fielded at about the goal line by Costello. He's going to bring it out. He's got the five going from left to right, 10. And dragged down on a great open field tackle by Denham Day at about the 16-yard line. Yeah, and, uh, you know, just trying to go, you know, from uh, left to right and try to get the edge and just not going to be able to outrun the Cougars there and get tackled down the 15-yard line. So 10 yards, hidden yardage right there to start at the 15. 6.55, quarter number one, 7 to nothing. College Station on top of Magnolia West. Dalton in the shotgun formation. Joseph back there with him. Two receivers to each side of the formation. Dalton takes the snap, turns, gives it to Joseph. He'll go right up the middle, and he'll push the pile forward up near the 20. Give him about the 19, so a gain of four. Sets up second and six. 
and a good hard run there. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, when, when you're talking about, you know, their backup running back, he is giving them some push. There. Fumble. A little confusion is Joseph tried to keep it and Dalton was trying to pull it out. They got a fortunate bounce as it comes right back to Dalton, and he's able to take it to the 22-yard line. So he picks up about four, and it's going to be third and three. Yeah, ball just laying out there in the middle, and Dalton saw it and able to pick it up. And, uh, you know, you've got defenders looking for the football on the ground. And uh, so now a big third down here. Cougars trying to do three straight three and outs. And that actually was not Joseph that he tried to hand it off to because Joseph just checked back in. So third down and short. Play clock at 10. Dalton takes a snap. Fakes the give. He's going to throw. He's got a receiver. This is going to be complete, and this will be a first down as he gets it to Marcus Collins, and Collins will get up to the 30-yard line. It'll stick out, uh, stick route right there and get to an open spot, sit down in the zone, and got a good quarterback there that makes the same read and put it to him right when he turned around for a first down. First, first down of the game for Magnolia West. Mustangs with the ball now at their own 30-yard line. Bring a receiver in motion from left to right. Dalton looking to throw. He's going to throw to the right side. He's got a receiver, and it's dropped. Receiver was open, just did not look in the pass. That would have been a first down right around the 45 of Mag West. I think that was two. That was number two. You're correct on that. That's Ty, uh, Excuse me, Trey Leggett. Hit him in the hands, and he just dropped that one. Yeah, and he had a first down. You're exactly right. Open in space, found a soft spot in the zone. Second and 10 now, shotgun formation again. Turn and give it to the running back, Joseph. And he'll be dragged down as he gets up near the 32-yard line. Javon Holmes with a good tackle right there. And he's really given the Cougars uh, a, a big body up in the front, especially when they go to uh, some even man fronts as well, even though they're playing basically a 3-4 right now. Third down and eight now. Bring an extra man into the backfield for the Mustangs. Now they'll motion him out of the backfield. That is Sam Mattingly. Dalton takes the shotgun formation. Good protection. He's throwing to the right side. He's got the receiver on the wheel route, and he could not haul it in. Good play concept right there as they uh, went in motion, took the uh, corner uh, with the first guy in motion. Then nobody accounted for the running back on the wheel. But uh, first down and third down, hit receivers in the hands, and you get no joy for that. And that's going to be frustrating for uh, the Mustangs. And I think if Nick Joseph hauls that one in, that might be a touchdown because he was on a sprint down the right side. Crop with another good high kick. Carnes will field this one at the 26, makes the fair catch, and that will be where the Cougars will take over first and 10. Yeah, he punts uh, and is, uh, you know, as I said, one of the best punters in the in the district. And you see how high those are and really give you no chance in reserve. Carnes has done a great job making sure he's caught each of those uh, three punts. 43 on that punt, I believe, if I'm doing the math correct. 42 as they mark it at the 26. And the Cougars take over first and 10, leading 7 to nothing with four and a half to go. Quarter number one, shotgun formation for Huff. Brings a receiver in motion from right to left. Gives it off to Brown. He's got a hole off the left side. He's going to break through. They are not going to get him. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Cougars. 74 yards right there. Great job by the line. And last week they gave up those 500 yards rushing. Long play was only 51 yards. So, uh, you know, but uh, Brown with a huge gain right there and didn't establish the run on the first drive, didn't need to on the second. You get a, a huge long touchdown run right there. Give Tyler Christensen and Corey Hendricks a lot of credit the left side of that line as they open that hole for Brown. Shrimp on to add the extra point out of the hold of Slanker. The snap, spot, kick is up, and it is good. Your new score with 419 to go. College Station 14, Magnolia West 0. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9.
Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline helps keep your engine running like new, with four levels of defense against gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. It's sort of like having ninjas protect your engine. It's fuel for thought in engines that continuously use Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. Fuel up with Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline at Max Express on Welburn Road. And while you're there, fill up with all your favorite snacks, chips, drinks, candies, and more. Max Express is your game day snack stop on Barron Road, Rock Prairie, and Welburn. The College Station offense showing its big strike, capa strike capabilities, and they lead it 14 to nothing with 419 to go here in the first quarter. Well, after the 52-yard touchdown pass, they changed, started protecting the pass a little bit. Then you're able to go back with Brown with the uh, one-play uh, touchdown drive, 74 yards, untouched, and really the, from the 40-yard in, uh, you know, he coasted uh, because there was no, nobody even on that side of the field after some tremendous blocking at the line of scrimmage. Costello and Joseph back to receive the kick from Sam Trimble. Trimble puts his foot into it. This time they're going to kick it pretty much left hash and Joseph's going to watch it go into the end zone for a touchback. Well, the Cougars in a uh, great spot now up 14. Uh, now the thing is really with their rushing attack kind of limited with their star tailback out injury, yeah, we're going to be a passing offense nice more, more than likely anyway. So now you've got to be ready, uh, you know, to, uh, to really defend that passing attack. First and 10 at the 25 for the Mustangs. Dalton in the shotgun formation. Joseph to his left. He's going to hand it off to him. Joseph trying to go on the right side. Great job of stringing it out by Harrison Robinson. And Joseph will get about a yard, but nothing more. Yeah, he was being engaged, but he kept sliding away from that tackle who didn't set the edge, and he was able to ride him out of bounds and to get him, hold him into a one-yard game. Really, when it's a one-on-one -on -one play on the outside, that's exactly how you want to see it. Now they'll send receivers, two receivers to each side of the formation. Joseph to Dalton's right. Now he brings him in motion across, looking to throw. And it's going to be almost intercepted. It was off the hands of the intended receiver, Marcus Collins, and then nearly intercepted. Yeah, that was a, nearly a pick right there for Lofton, and he would have taken that one to the house. I think you heard the collective groan <laughs> through the crowd, Mike. But it leads them third and nine. So your defense still, you know, have them behind the chains a little bit. As Scott said, third and nine now. Dalton shotgun formation sends the back out of the backfield in motion. Looking to throw down the right side. He's got a receiver, but he overthrows him. So three straight drops and then an overthrow right there. Four straight incomplete passes. That was intended for Jeffrey Crop. He was being covered by Keyshawn Cooper. And it'll be another three and out for this Magnolia West offense. Crop will hustle back into the backfield to punt once again as the College Station defense does its job. Carnes will stand at his own 35-yard line. Crop puts his foot into it. Another good high kick. Carnes calling for the fair catch and could not get there because he had a defender bearing down on him. So the ball just is going to bounce and it'll be killed at the College Station 10-yard line. Surprising they didn't call them for contact yeah. there. I, I was a little bit. There is a there is a flag. Okay. At the 40 or 37-yard line. Well, that's where I think they had contact with the ability to catch a fair catch, and that's going to be 40 yards away when they set the ball down from where it was ended up rolling at the 10. Referees discussing it. Here comes your call. Kick catch interference, number seven, the kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, foul station. That's a huge penalty against Mac West because it would have pinned the Cougars back at their own 10 yard line, but instead they're going to start in Mustang territory at the 48 yard line. Yeah, so, you know, there you go. A 42 yard penalty um, that, you know, when you're down 14 to nothing, you can't afford to have that kind of mistake because you're going to have him fair catch the ball at the 37. And, you know, that's a great punt from there, the position they were in anyway. 
Shotgun formation for Huff. Fakes the give to Sewell coming around. He's going to throw deep. He had a receiver, but he overthrows it. That was intended for Cash Richter and just could not come down with it. Had a little bit of pressure. He had to slide to the left and then let that pass go. I think if he'd been able to kept his, keep his feet, he would have had more air under it and given Richter a chance to run underneath it. Second and ten now for the Cougars. Let's talk about going right at them. <laughs> After, uh, you know, some big plays, a 48-yard 40, a touchdown pass and a 75-yard, 76-yard run. Hand it off to Roderick Brown. He's going to cut into the middle of the line, and he'll get about four on the game. And that'll set up third and six as we approach three and a half to go here in quarter number one with College Station on top, 14 to nothing. Cougars slowing things down a little bit here. Two receivers to each side of the formation. Brown to Huff's right. Shotgun formation. Huff takes the snap. He's going to throw to the left side. It's going to be intended for Richter. It's going to be broken up on good coverage. Excuse me. It was it was intended for Carnes, and on the coverage there was Landon Thomas. Yeah, he broke on the ball really well, and you had you also had another guy there. That's why I think that you were saying who was that pass for. You had two uh, receivers in the same position, really got the defensive focus over there, but that one was tipped away on a good defensive play. Shrimp into punt. Puts his foot into it. Good high kick. It's going to come down and hit, and the Cougars have a chance to kick. Oh, that may have hit the receiver. As he was dancing And he's the one who, re he okay. who recovered it. Yeah, that was, that was uh, Trey Leggett. He was down there dancing around it at about the three-yard line, and that ball popped up, and I think it may have hit him, and right. he smartly fell on it. Yeah, and the Cougars right there were trying to get the ball, so they saw it hit him as well. So now they get punted down to the three-yard line, and there's that change in possession because of the and, – and because they had the contact, and that's the reason why the ball rolled down to the 10 with the Cougars, but you turn around and punt them down inside the five-yard line. First and 10 for Mag West at its own three-yard line. Dalton, the quarterback, will stand in the shotgun formation about three yards deep in the end zone. Has Joseph back there with him. He's going to give it to Joseph. Joseph starts up the middle, then bounces out to the left, and he is not going to find anything as he's probably going to lose a yard. Yeah, I think they're going to mark him at the two, and he nearly spun his way into the end zone of his own accord, and it would have been a safety. They do mark him back at the two-yard line, so second and 11 now. Good job by the Cougar defense of not letting him bounce outside. Now, how risky are you going to be in the passing game right here? Are they going to let the quarterback Dalton run again? Dalton takes the snap, fakes the give. He's going to throw the bubble screen out to the right side, and they'll get up across the five-yard line, but not much more as there was no blockers out there once the receiver caught that ball. And that is going to be Leggett that made the catch, and they give him the eight. So they well, that was a pretty safe pass because if he doesn't catch it, it's going to go out of bounds and uh, be an incompletion. So it's going to be third and five now as we go under two minutes to play in quarter number one. Two receivers to each side of the formation stacked. Dalton drops back to pass. Good protection. He's going to throw to the right side, and it's too high for the intended receiver. That was intended for Crop, and Crop could not come down with it. It was, it was too tall. Well, now he's got a punt from his eight-yard line. So the Cougars' defense has played about as well as you can play so far here through quarter number one. Crop will have to punt once again. He's about seven yards deep in his own end zone here. Karn stands at the Magnolia West 45. Crop gets off another good high kick. And Karn's calling for and making the fair catch at the Magnolia West 47-yard line. I do not think we have seen a punter kick it as high as Crop has. No, tonight. he was the best guy that I, we saw last year too, uh, Tim, and he he really is a weapon there. And and you know, uh, with his ability to also play some offense, you're talking about a guy that could be a two-way guy, uh, you know, and be a college player. I mean, he really is a good punter and does give them uh, something in the in the pass game with his size. 39 yards on that punt. The Cougars start first and 10 at the Mag West. 47-yard line, leaning 14 to nothing with 1.39 to go in the first quarter. Handed off to Roderick Brown. He's going to go off the left side once again. Breaks a couple of tackles, runs over a defender, and then out of bounds at about the 32 of Mag West. Easy 15 yards there, and then he was the guy laying the punishment at the end of that tackle. 
another five yards close, uh, further away from the uh, sideline. He might have taken that one to the house. They mark it at the 33. This time they're going to motion Brown out of the backfield. They're going to throw the bubble screen to Traylon Sewell. He's got the 20 and dragged down there. A nice job, though, of following his blockers, dancing around, and getting it down inside the 20 for another College Station first down. Yeah, it was Brown out there in front of him blocking after he came in motion. Sewell gets there so quick, that pass almost hit Brown in the back as he was going out to block. As This time they hand it to Brown. He goes up the middle. He'll get about a yard, maybe two. And it'll set up second in about nine. But the Cougar offense really rolling. And, uh, you know, that's what you want to see here getting ready for playoffs. Huff looking to pass. He's got Sewell coming across from left to right. Sewell breaks one tackle, and then he'll be knocked down inside the 10. And he has enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal for the Cougars at the Magnolia West eight-yard line. Give that to the offensive line. They let that crossing pattern get all the way across to the hash mark from the outside receiver. They did a great job blocking and giving Huff time to wait for Sewell to break free. Tight formation here. They're going to give it off to Brown. He's going to look for room off the right side. Got to find a little bit. He'll get inside the five, and it'll be second and goal. Setting up his blockers there. I like to see that. Put the hand on the back of an offensive lineman is always something the offensive lineman and film say, yeah, you were right in my back pocket and got down to the four-yard line. Second and goal now. Huff handed off to Brown again. He's going to go left, then bounce into the middle, and he'll be stopped at the one. And it'll be third and goal, as that may be the final play of the quarter. We'll see if the Cougars get another one off, as we are already down to eight seconds here remaining in quarter number one. Not sure if they will try and rush this. I don't think they're going to be able to get no, it off. No, because they did a, a switch yeah. defensively. That was going to hold the defense up, and uh, the Cougars will go to the second quarter up 14 to nothing. That's the end of the first quarter. A good one for College Station. They lead it 14 to nothing. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Need to purchase equipment before the end of this year for tax purposes? ASAP Equipment sells ASV track skid steers, Yanmar mini excavators, and commercial zero-turn mowers from Bad Boy, Gravely, and Hustler. ASAP Equipment also rents the equipment you need to get your winter projects done. If you've been waiting for the perfect time to buy or rent equipment, the time is now and the best deals are only at ASAP Equipment. Hurry in, the year is almost over and units are limited. Call John Jarvis at 979-690-1106 or click ASAPEquip.com for more info today. On to quarter number two here at Cougar Stadium. It's brought to you by Ed Phillips Plumbing, the real 24-hour plumber, ed-phillips-plumbing.com. 14 to nothing is our score. College Station on top. Tim Schnettler, Scott Clendenin, Sean Burnett back at the station pushing all the right buttons. As we go through the second quarter, we're going to take a look at the Brazos Valley scoreboard. It's brought to you by Arify AC. HVAC installs, upgrades, and repairs. Get 10% off any job, large or small. Go to airifyac.com, keeping Texas comfortable. One final uh, rudder clinched a winning season last night, 6-4. Six 6-4 to four. Six to four in the year with a 28-21 victory of Lamar Consolidated. As we go back to action, College Station facing a third and goal from the one-yard line. Full house backfield. They're going to give it to Marquise Collins, and he's going to go in easily off the left side. Touchdown, Cougars. Yeah, really, and I think that when they showed the last couple days that they would have give Huff would keep it himself, that really gave, you know, some defenses some stuff to look at. But when you have Collins and Brown, I mean, my mess around, uh, you know, and, and he's able to really get that great push and get the touchdown. Dawson Shrimp on to add the extra point out of the hold of Jackson Slanker. Snap, spot, kick is up, and it's good. Your new score with 11.57 to go, College Station 21, Magnolia West 0. Slanker with a great job on that hold. It bounced in front of uh, him a little bit and got it down, spun those laces to help that kick. 21 to nothing. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Buying a car isn't just about the color, features, or gas mileage. It's finding the right fit, the right feel, the things that put a smile on your face. It's about the joy ride, not only for you, but for your best friends and family. At Aggieland Credit Union, we'll help make your new car dreams a reality with rates as low as 1.79% APR. Aggieland Credit Union, we're with you every step of the way. APR is annual percentage rate. Terms and conditions apply. 
College Station with its third score of the night to increase the lead to 21 to nothing. Seven plays, 47 yards. Collins, that one yard uh, touchdown dive behind the left guard there gives you the Cougars that 21 nothing lead. Let's take a look at some more scores. Cleveland, they lead New Caney. I'm sorry, Caney Creek, six to three. Uh, New Caney trails uh, Magnolia, 14 to seven. Uh, the uh, other games in progress. Waller took a 7-0 lead over Lufkin, but the Panthers come back two touchdowns, 14-7. And then we'll look at some teams that the Cougars may play here in a minute. This kickoff is going to be fielded by Costello at about the 7-yard line. He's at the 20, and he's going to be hit as he approaches the 25. And that's where Magnolia West will start this drive. Longview and John Tyler, actually Tyler High now. They're no longer John Tyler. Uh, that game going to kick at 7.30, so it's about to get started. But uh, Ryan, number one, uh, Ryan Raiders, 14 to nothing over number eight, uh, Lone Star. So uh, that is the second round. The winner of that district waits in the second round. Uh, and they play the uh, fourth place team out of the uh, Dallas district, which has uh, only had four or five games played this year. Dalton in the shotgun formation, gives it off to Joseph. He'll go off the left side, and he'll get across the 25. The drive started at the 24, so give him about three on the gain as he gets it up near the 27-yard line. And the Cougars really have taken that play away on first down, and it's been second and long and third and long. And I think Dalton's thrown a couple of these passes just a little too hard for his receivers. He's looking to throw as he rolls to his left. Or excuse me, it is right. He's got a receiver. This is going to be caught, and they're having a hard time dragging him down. He's going to pull this one all the way up near midfield. That is going to be number 88 once again, Marcus Collins. And Collins with a big gain all the way to the Magnolia West 48-yard line. Byron Johnson played the ball and nearly had an interception right there. Uh, and then uh, the he looks more like a tight end than a receiver, 88 does. Shotgun formation again, fake the give. He's going to throw down the right side, looking for Crop, and Crop pushes off, and he catches it, takes it into the end zone. There is a penalty flag. We'll see who they call this one off on, but it sure looked like he pushed off on Denim Day. Uh, when the uh, official that throws the flag doesn't raise his hands for a touchdown, it's usually offense pass interference. And that one was obvious. Yes. Uh, it was right there in front of the official, That's and Crop is called for the uh, pass That's interference. So two really big penalties, uh, kick, kick catch interference and then uh, that offensive pass interference. But I think that he's the coverage is uh, right on him, and I don't think that you're going to have Denim Day uh, not knock the ball away. Yeah, Denim Day was running stride for stride, and you could see it was that left arm that Crop just pushed him away with, and that definitely gave him the separation he needed to make that catch. So instead of a touchdown, that moves them all the way back to their own 33-yard line. They need to get to the College Station 42 for a first down, so first and 25 following the 15-yard penalty. Shotgun formation again for Dalton, takes the snap. Gives it off to Joseph. Joseph trying to wait for his blockers, and he'll get up to the 20, or excuse me, the 35, so give him two on the game. Jackson Slanker in on the tackle. And the Cougars' uh, defense continuing to limit that rushing attack, and it, they just can't balance their offense without Bilbo. Two receivers on each side of the formation. Dalton fakes the give, looking to throw under some pressure. Now he's going to have to pull it down and run. He's got the 40, 45, 50, and he'll slide down at the Magnolia West, four, or excuse me, the College Station 45-yard line. Big gain there, and it's going to set up third and three. Yeah, the pressure did not con contain the pocket, and that's why he was able to run right. 19 yards on the gain. Sets up third and three from the... College Station 45-yard line, and I'd have to think trailing 21 to nothing, this is four-down territory. Yeah, and uh, Crop's actually calling for the ball out here. They're going to run the option to the left, and uh, excuse me, Dalton's going to keep it himself. He'll spin, fall forward, half a yard short. And we'll see where they mark him. He's close to the first down here. I think he's going to be about half a yard short, but yeah, they'll think, go for it on fourth I down. I think you're exactly right, Scott. Referee is eyeing it, and he's going to call for a measurement. 
So they'll bring the chains in. College Station football brought to you this season by Prosperity Bank. Real Banker's not just a bank. Prosperity Bank member FDIC. And by Brian, College Station Toyota, a new kind of different. Dalton, a big guy. He's one of the better quarterbacks in this uh, district. And you can see on the last two plays where he's been able, able to run the football, uh, you know, now that slide where he had some open field in front of him a little bit more could play big on this. Now it's fourth down. And they're bringing the chains in. Still waiting for them to stretch it completely. And he is going to be short by about a football. So it'll be fourth down, but I uh, would expect Magnolia West to keep the offense on the field here and go for it, trailing 21 to nothing with 9.55 to go in the first half. And even if they put the punt team out there with Crop being the punter, I think that the yeah. Cougar defense would stay on the field anyway. But a big play. It'll be interesting to see if a spread team will actually put that quarterback behind the line under center and just get a, a, a push, a couple, uh, you know, a couple big linemen in front of him, or if they're going to do something out of, uh, you know, the shotgun. This is one of those where if you put the quarterback under center, he could almost fall forward and get it. You know, and, but like you said, they are a spread team. We'll see how they handle this. They are keeping the offense on the field. Dalton, as we said, a big guy, and they're going to stay in the shotgun formation. I, I just, this is something that just. I don't understand these teams. You've got to learn how to go under center at some point. Shotgun formation, take the snap, give it off to Joseph. He's going to have the throw. Oh, he, oh, it's going to be close. I think, I think got he it. got it. Man, I, I think he's going to be the nose of the football yeah. right at the mark. It looked, let's, let's see where, which foot he puts it down on. They, they gave it to him. The referee made a signal. It looked like he was going to have it immediately. It looked like he was going to have a couple of yards more, and then all of a sudden the defense just closed, and that was not Joseph, actually. That is going to be number 41, Eric Bilbo, who's listed as an offensive line. Lineman, a sophomore. <laughs> That's who they brought well, in. Well, actually, here. where they marked the football, uh, where the football is marked, he would have had the first down. Yeah. So first and 10 for Mag West at the College Station 42. Dalton looking to throw. He's hit as he lets it go. The play was called dead because there was a false start out here on Crop, and then a little extracurricular as Denim Day making the tackle on Crop after the after the play. Day not letting him go, and Crop just like swung his arms to get Denim Day away from it, but it was a false start again out here on the left side, and that'll mark it back five. Well, I mean, uh, is it karma? The chickens come to roost after you put 97 on a team in your district where you have more talent? Uh, sometimes you have to wonder. I'm surprised you waited this long to mention that, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> We've got people from Mag West watching the internet feed. <laughs> under nine minutes, or just going under nine minutes to go. First and 10 for Mag West. First and 15, excuse me. Bring a receiver in motion from right to left. Dalton looking to throw. He's going to throw down the left side, and it's incomplete. Too tall for the receiver. The receiver looking for pass interference on Zamari and Lofton, but no flag. Well, the good thing is Lofton is a bigger guy, so uh, you are getting to, to you know, uh, you know, defend a, a guy that has tight end size out there. And 81's not small either. Neither is yeah. Krupp. They've got some size on that uh, the wide receiver court. That was Marcus Collins, the intended receiver. And as we talked about earlier when he made a catch, he is a big man as he dragged a couple of defenders on that catch earlier in the ball game. Second down and 15 now for Mag West at the College Station 47. Send Joseph in motion out of the backfield. Dalton's going to keep it himself. He'll go off the left side. He's going to get across the 40 and down near the 37-yard line. So a nice run there by Dalton. Draw the whole way. Uh, really no even uh, trying to fool yourself that it was going to be anything but a run there for the quarterback. It's going to set up third down. Ball is at the College Station 37. It's third and five as we approach 840 to go. Actually, the clock stopped. He ran out of bounds. Excuse me on that. Shotgun formation again for Dalton. Two receivers each side of the formation. Fake the give, looking to throw. He's going to throw down the left side. He's got a receiver just a little bit too far, not able to bring it in. That is Collins once again. And even though he didn't make a play on the ball, uh, you didn't have Lofton do anything to the receiver because he was running stride for stride with him. He's not going to be able to turn his head, but a great defensive play there, and they're going to have to go for it on fourth and five. They do keep the offense on the field. 8.36 to go in the ball game. College Station on top, 21 to nothing. They're flipping the receivers from right to left. 
You're going to have two receivers on each side of the formation. Crop is on the left side. He's their big receiver. Empty backfield. Dalton takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He's looking to the left side. He's going for Crop. Some hand fighting again between Crop and the defender, but the pass is too far incomplete. Crop turns to the, re to the referee and is trying to get a flag, but no flag thrown. And, and Cooper it's was be a turnover on down. See, Cooper plays that completely different from Lofton, a little bit younger uh, defender out there. Uh, Cooper knew exactly where he needed to be, and he let uh, Crop push off. It w if anything, if any penalty, it would have been offensive pass interference again. And, you know, I'm going to keep an eye on Crop the rest of this game because he did not stop talking to the referee the whole time he walked to the bench. And so he's, I think the he, referees are probably on yeah. edge after what happened in Edinburgh last night, yeah. <laughs> honestly. Turnover on downs, College Station will start first and 10 at its own 37-yard line, 829, quarter number two, College Station on top, 21 to nothing. In motion from left to right is Traylon Sewell. They're going to hand it to Brown. He'll go up the middle, and he'll have about seven. And it'll set up second down. And that 37-yard line, the worst starting field position for the Cougars tonight. Could have been the 10. Yes, it could have been. But you had kick-catch interference that wiped that out. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Bring Sewell in motion from right to left. Give it off to Brown again. He's going to go up the middle, breaks through. He's into Magnolia West territory. They're not going to get him. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Cougars. Roderick Brown with his second long touchdown run of the night. And the Cougars are on top 27 to nothing with the extra point pending. And it's about time for Magnolia to West to lay down and, uh, you know, see their season come to the end the way they're playing tonight against the Cougars. Dawson Shrimp on to add the extra point out of the hold of Jackson Slanker. Snap, spot, kick is up, and it's good. 7.56 to go here at Cougar Stadium in quarter number two. Your new score, College Station 28, Magnolia West 0. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Lynn College is proud to support its local high schools this football season. For more than 137 years, Blinn and its caring professors have helped students reach their educational goals. Blinn offers nationally recognized academic transfer, dual credit, and career training programs with classes available online and on campus. Blinn students save 44% compared to the average state university, and classes are now open for registration. So learn more today. Click the visit button at blinn.edu and schedule your virtual visit with our friendly staff. Roderick Brown with another big touchdown run and the Cougars lead at 28 to nothing. Checking those scoreboard again. Uh, Lone Stars on the board against Denton Ryan, 14 to 7 that game. Cleveland and Caney Creek still 6-3. Uh, Magnolia 21 to 7 over New Caney. And uh, Lufkin on top of Walter 14 to 7. They're still in the first quarter. Longview has already on, uh, got a touchdown less than two minutes into the game against uh, Tyler. If Longview wins, uh, they win the tiebreaker, and the Cougars play Sherman here next weekend. Landon Thomas and Cody Costello back to receive the kick from Sam Tremble. College Station football brought to you this season by JB Propane, your local Aggie family owned and operated propane provider since 1991. Visit jmbpropane.com. Brian has the week off this week. They'll be in the playoffs next week, probably playing Cedar Hill, a top 10 team. Yeah, they, are, they are playing Cedar Hill. That's been determined. I saw that today as Tremble kicks this one. And it's dropped in the end zone and then picked up by the receiver. He's going to try and bring it out. He's going to have the 15, and then he'll be stood up as he comes the across. Down. The ball comes out. I don't know if the no, whistle No, they did blew. not blow the whistle. Yeah, they, it was recovered by Mag West. That was Landon Thomas on the kickoff return. First time we've seen him out there tonight. And he fielded that about a yard or two deep in the end zone, decided to bring it out after he fumbled it in the end zone. And they're going to mark him at the... Let's see if we get a penalty here. Going on the field, the fumble recovered by Mag West. Offside on the kicking team. Okay. Five-yard penalty to be added to the end of the play. First down. All right, so the uh, Cougars will get the uh, defense on the field at the 21-yard line, but that's still great coverage by College Station. Well, right now they're marked. They've got the ball Correction. at the... Mag West has chosen to re-kick. Okay, because I was going to say, right now the official was standing at the 29 with the ball, but they're going to re-kick it. 
All right, well, let's see if they give him the opportunity to drive it now, and they really only gain four yards on this instead of uh, – well, actually, I guess it would be an eight-yard penalty because they were going to get the ball at the 16-yard line. So this time, Landon Thomas is not in there. It's Cody Costello along with Nick Joseph back to receive the kick. College Station football brought to you this season by Willis Custom Homes, serving the Brazos Valley with efficient, reliable, quality yeah, construction since 2003. Mm -hmm. Visit willishomestx.com and by Zwerneman Flooring. For new flooring, backsplashes, and showers, and remodels or new construction, visit zfloors.net. AM consolidated to clinch the playoff berth with their victory last week over Rudder, and they're off tonight. So now we can see him kick off from the uh, college spot. We haven't seen that this year. He's been so great from the 40 yard line. Tremble ready. Kicking off from the 35 now, puts his foot into it. And this one is going to hit at the five and go into the end zone as Joseph let it go. And it's a touchback. So they get nine yards there after the uh, the penalty. So, uh, but the uh, Cougar defense, and you got to wonder if they're going to continue to try to run the football in those one and two yard gains, or just completely go to the passing attack. Problem has been the Cougars have really had great uh, coverage in the secondary, and have shut down uh, what they've tried to do. We've got 7:48 to go here in the first half. College Station on top, 28 to nothing in the final regular season game for both teams. Shotgun formation for Dalton. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to throw out to the right, and he's going to have a receiver that's going to be caught by Trey Leggett. And Leggett will fall out of bounds. He caught it right on the line and give him six on the game. Actually, seven now that they've marked it, and he'll set up second and three. But up four touchdowns, you'll uh, take it where they have to drive the field to try to get anything against you. Snap was high. Dalton pulls it down, gives it off to Joseph. He'll go off the left side, hit the pile, and get up near the first down marker. Short. They're going to go third and one. Jovan Holmes in there on the tackle. Name we've been calling quite a bit lately as he's really stepped his game up. Yeah, now is where the uh, Cougars go even front. Third down and short. Shotgun formation again. Give it off to Joseph. Looking for him up the left side. He's not going to find any, and he's going to be hit and dropped for a loss. Great job coming up there by Zamarian Lofton was in there also. I, uh, Almaraz. A loss on the play. It'll be forced down for the most time. And they no lose. official loss because that was, uh, because it was inches short. Uh, but he did lose uh, almost a full yard, and that gives them fourth now and one. Fourth and a full yard. And they're looking to the sideline. The offense still on the field. It looks like they are going to go for it here in you their own keep, territory. you got to keep it in Dalton's hands on the edge with some run pass option. Shotgun formation sends the back out of motion. And just like you said, Dalton keeps it, goes up the middle, runs over the referee, and he's going to have the first down easily as he gets up near the, or the uh, Magnolia West 48-yard line. And the, receipt, the uh, referee not able to get out of the way there. And he's still, and down, he's still on down on a knee. He needs a second here to catch his breath. It's the umpire that got taken out there. Hopefully he's not hurting too bad. They're going to give him some time here to, to catch his breath. Yeah, the head ref is going to call timeout. As you said it, they needed to keep it in Dalton's hands, and they did, and he gets the first down. We're going to step aside. 6.27 to go. Quarter number two, College Station on top, 28 to nothing. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. You'll be all smiles with Brazos Valley Orthodontics. Dr. Gardner and his experienced team create beautiful smiles for patients of all ages. They offer the most technologically advanced, efficient, and effective treatments from traditional braces to Invisalign appliances. If you're thinking about orthodontics for yourself or someone in your family, contact Brazos Valley Orthodontics to schedule your complimentary consultation or start your free virtual five-minute smile assessment now at bvorthodontics.com. College Station football brought to you this season by ASAP Equipment. To purchase or rent premium equipment at affordable prices, visit ASAPEquip.com. And by Brazos Valley Orthodontics, creating beautiful smiles with traditional braces and Invisalign treatments, bvorthodontics.com. 
Longview on top now of uh, Tyler, 21 to nothing. So it looks like Sherman's going to be the Cougars' opponent. Back to action now. The referee is okay. Doc Frazier out there to check on him. Glad to see that he is okay and ready to continue. And as we come back, it's first and 10. Mag West, Dalton looking to throw. Now he's going to scramble. He's going to be chased out to the left side. He'll be hit at midfield and brought down by Bubba Carter. Also there, Jackson Slanker. But he does get a gain of three. They're actually going to mark him at the College Station 49. Yeah, a stiff arm there on Carter. Carter shook that off and able to get him down on the ground. But, uh, you know, uh, it's getting a little chippy out there, especially with the Cougars up uh, 28 to nothing. Dalton is very impressive. Yes, yes. He, he is a good quarterback. He he can fling the ball. He's a good runner. He's got speed. He has a lot of speed when you watch him out there. He'll take the snap. He's looking to throw. He's got some protection. He's going to throw deep over the middle. He's got a receiver who goes up. It's Crop. He makes the catch, and he's going to be inside the 10, mark him down at the College Station 6. It'll be first and goal for Crop. He got the inside uh, positioning there. Uh, Crop will come off after that play, though. Uh, but still, I like the coverage that you saw from Denim Day on the play as Crop goes to the sideline. I think he may be a little bit hurt. He came down on a yeah. shoulder. Yeah, because he immediately tapped his helmet saying he needed to come out. He just went to the sideline, took off his helmet, and the trainers are over there with him. But it is first and goal for Mag West at the College Station six-yard line, their first scoring threat of the night. Dalton takes the snap, gives it off to Joseph. He'll go up the middle. He'll get inside the five, and now he'll be dragged down at about the Ball's two. Out. The ball comes out. No, they said forward progress stopped. Okay. I, Isaac Almaraz comes out of there with the ball, but his progress was stopped. It'll be second and goal now. A little early for a, a pity play there for uh, the officials, but uh, his looked like his but he was turned sideways, and I don't know if that's your forward progress stopped. And he comes off limping now. Second and goal, they're going to throw, and they've got a wide open receiver in the end zone. Touchdown, Magnolia West. And with their offensive lineman laying on Cougar defensive lineman, and then not uh, getting up, uh, they took down Javon Holmes after the play. Uh, the double, triple team on, on him on the touchdown rolled out away from him. Wade Nobles, the reception for the touchdown, and Mag West on the board. Coming on to add the extra point is going to be Daniel Horn. The snap, the spot, the kick is up, and it's good. Your new score with 4.37 to go in the four, uh, second quarter. College Station 28, Magnolia West 7. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Magnolia West gets on the board with a great drive and a touchdown pass. College Station still on top, 28 to 7. Yeah, eight plays, 75 yards. Really, that 43 yard pass to Crop was the big play that really turned the field position over. Uh, Dalton with a four yard touchdown pass to Nobles, 28 to 7, 437 to play. Looking over on the Magnolia West sideline, I do see them working Crop's right arm, lifting it up and down. So, as you said, he came down on a shoulder as a pooch kick is fair caught at the 40-yard line by College Station. I don't know if he raised the hand on the uh, on the uh, 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 on. I mean, uh, the pooch kick or not? That he was, went down to a knee right away, but that, yeah, that was Chase Birch. And College Station takes over first and ten at its own 40. And get the ball to start the second half. So here's a big a big chance for a big drive right here. Shotgun formation for Jed Huff. Trips to the right. He's going to throw the bubble screen to Traylon Sewell. Looking for a block, he gets one. And he'll get up near the midfield stripe. Give him eight on the game. Sets up second and two. Inside guy was trying to get there, but he was really going to be about two yards too late and Sewell broke it outside. Great read about what the defense was gonna give you to get it out to the 48. 
Sewell comes in motion from left to right. They're going to give it to Roderick Brown. He'll hit the hole and push it across midfield to the 49, and that's enough for a Cougar first down. I want to see one of those four-minute drives here to end the half. Lone Star's come back to tie number one, Denton Ryan, 14-0. They're two minutes to play in the first half of that ball game. Looking over on the Magnolia West sideline, Crop was up with his helmet off. Now he went and sat down with the other receivers and took it off. So it looks like he'll probably be coming back into the game. Huff, shotgun formation, takes a snap, throws it out to the right side. That's going to be complete to Houston Thomas. And he'll step out of bounds after a gain of seven. And he wanted to come back, stay in bounds, but that right foot got right on the sideline when he turned up field and saw there was nobody there. Second and three now for the Cougars. Huff takes the snap. He's going to give it off to Brown. Brown's going to be hit after a short gain. And it'll set up third and short. Clock rolls, three and a half to go here in the first half. Yeah, down to the 40-yard uh, line, a full yard short of a first down here. They're going to pitch it to Brown. He's going to go off the left side. He'll be hit in the backfield, but he's able to fall forward. We'll see if he got enough for the first down as there was good penetration by the Mag West defense. And they're going to no give the Cougars yet. a first down. I don't know. They're marking him short. No, they, didn't, they never marked the ball. The Cougars marked the ball themselves. <laughs> the head linesman ran about halfway and then didn't. didn't now they got to take the head linesman out there and have him uh, look at the football because he didn't go and mark the ball and they're going to say first down because he then went and signaled first down uh, because he didn't go spot the ball. Uh, now they're your, your uh, umpire spotted the ball after the middle of the field. They're talking about it and there it is first down signal. I don't know if he oh. made it or not, no, but no, what no, I'm saying wait, is no, hold on. The no. referee just called first down and the other referee on the far side was bringing the chains in and now yeah. he's like, take them back. I called first down. But the problem was the headlines would need to go out and spot the yeah. football. Yeah. And so, when so he, he just there. said it was first down, and then you let the umpire spot the ball, and you can't even tell if it's where the ball actually was or not. Magnolia West coaches are out there talking to the referee, and I don't, I, bl I, I don't blame them. I don't either yeah. because I think that you know I think it might have been a first down for the Cougars and, anyway. And now they're bringing the chains out. <laughs> uh, no, so, uh, Coach Huff is not. No, he's coming <laughs> off the sidelines now as well because uh, the umpire is not the one who spots the football. Yeah. They are bringing the chains out now for a measurement, so we'll see. A little bit of confusion. There's not a little bit of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be nice. And it is a first down by about the nose of a football. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I really think that um, you're going to see the starters play quite a bit in the second half for the Cougars. I think so, too. I mean, you, you've got to get tuned up for the playoffs. Well, you also got to get uh, somebody else tuned up. Yeah. Shotgun formation for Huff on first and ten. He's going to turn, or he does a twirl and then throws the slant to Houston Thomas, and Thomas gets about three. That middle screen there after the pirouette. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't think of what to call it there as he took it, started left, and then spun around right. And as soon as he spun around, he let it go to Houston Thomas, and it's a gain of three. 248 and counting. Bring Sewell in motion. Hand it off to Brown off the right side. He's got some room. He's across the 30. And now dragged down at the 26. That's another Cougar first down. It's a good hard running there by Roderick Brown and also some good blocking on the right side of the line. Great to see uh, the uh, Mag West Spirit Squad over there blowing their air horn when you hold somebody to a three yard gain. First and 10 for the Cougars. Cash Richter comes in motion from left to right. Huff's looking to throw. He's going towards the end zone. He's got a receiver, makes an over-the-shoulder catch. It's Roderick Brown. Touchdown, Cougars. Wheel route right there with a little bit of touch. This time, uh, you see the receiver catch it. Brown uh, was able to uh, you know, catch that over the shoulder, looking more like a receiver than just a running back there. And uh, the Cougars with some timeouts. Maybe they're going to get the football back before the end of this first half. Dawson Shrimp on to add the extra point out of the hold of Jackson Slanker. 
Snap, spot, kick is up. It's good. There is a penalty flag that was thrown. Let's wait and see what it is. Not Magnolia sure. thinks it's a West, thinks it's against the Cougars. Cougars have run off the field. I think this one's against College Station, possibly. No. Well, now the Mag West players run it off the field. They're talking to Coach Huff. Legal formation on the defense. Okay. Number 32 was lined up over the center. Penalty declined. Next point is good. There you go. So 219 to go. Your new score. College Station 35, Magnolia West 7. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Kelly Burt Dozer has been clearing the path for progress for over 35 years. So before construction ever starts on any new home or business, your first thought and your first phone call should be Kelly Burt Dozer. Since 1978, Kelly Burt Dozer has handled hundreds of jobs throughout the Brazos Valley. They know the obstacles you must overcome to successfully excavate and fully prepare this terrain with efficient solutions to ensure a job well done. No matter your time frame or budget, that's Kelly Burt Dozer. Call 778-1902 or click kellyburtdozer.com. Com. College Station High School Football is brought to you by Intech Pest Management. Service and professionalism since 1995. This is Maverick 100.9 KVMK. Wheelock Bryan College Station. Roderick Brown with his third touchdown of the night. This one through the air, and the Cougars lead at 35-7. to seven. Yeah, eight plays, 60 yards. Uh, Will right there, 28-yard touchdown pass. Uh, Cap that drive, 219 to play. Joseph and Costello back to receive... The kick from Tremble. It's going to be Joseph at the 5. 10. Bounces out to the right side. 15. 20. Breaks a couple of tackles. Pushes forward. 25. Still on his feet and drags the defense to about the 30. And a good return there. Yeah, he uh, just kind of got behind some of his blockers, able to get the ball out. Let's see if they're going to put it at the 30 or the 31, the 31 yard line. First and 10 for the Mustangs, 2.08 to go in the half. They do mark it at the 31. So a 26 yard return for Joseph, Nick Joseph. Good to see Crute back out there at wide receiver. Yep, he is out there. He's on the right side of the formation. Shotgun formation for Dalton. Trips to the left. Take the snap, fake the give. He's looking to Krupp right away. Krupp hauls it in. He's got the first down on the slant. Here comes a late penalty flag. Illegal guy downfield, 75 is way past the line of scrimmage. How about we say 75? Or you could choose 71 too. An eligible receiver downfield, number 79. Offense. Or 79, I guess, Scott. Go first down. They don't have a 79. Oh, they're 79. 75 was farther downfield than he was. So wipe out the first down gain, mark them back five, and make it first and 15. As you said, Krupp back out there. That would, They went to him right away on the slant, and he did a nice job of hauling that pass in. Got the uh, a receiver in the backfield with him now. Take the snap. They're going to give it off to that receiver. That is number 85. That's Sam Mattingly, and oh, Mattingly is going to get Mattingly. to the original line of scrimmage where the drive started and get about three more than that. So Luke give him about Thompson. eight on the gain. Sets up second and actually give him seven on the gain. Sets up second and eight. And I uh, got to make sure that uh, you don't let them get anything over the top because they're just as uh, happy to let the clock run out. And actually give him eight on the game, make it second and seven as Mattingly motions out of the backfield. Dalton looking to throw over the middle. He's got a receiver. That's going to be caught in College Station territory. That is going to be Marcus Collins. Collins will go all the way down to the College Station 30-yard line. A big game there for Mag West. And the Mustangs in business with 116 to go in the half. Had two guys there, uh, need to have one of them knock the ball away. It's like, are you going to take it or am I? And uh, they were able to get it now into plus territory, and they will run and now not look to run the clock out. Mac West has all its timeouts as well. Dalton's going to take it himself. He's going to get up to the line of scrimmage, and then he'll be driven back. No gain, and here comes the first timeout of the half for Magnolia West with 102 to go here in the quarter. Mag West, that is their first. Take a look at the scoreboard here. Uh, Denton Ryan and Lone Star tied 14-all at halftime. 
Cleveland 22, Caney Creek 3. 25 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Magnolia leads New Caney 21 to 7. And it is uh, Lufkin 21, Waller 13, 537 to play in the third quarter. 35 to nothing long view over Tyler. So as we mentioned in this district, you've got Waller, Lufkin, Magnolia West, and New Caney, and New Caney Porter. I'll have four I'll, wins. I'll, I'll, I'll have four wins. Waller has three. Waller three. has three. Porter's already finished its season, so yes. they're four and four. But those are the teams fighting for the final two playoff spots. And so some important games tonight. And right now, not looking good for Magnolia West. No, and they can, uh, you know, go to uh, four and four and lose some tiebreakers there. Because, you know, uh, when you score 97, they kind of cap that as a 20-point win, no matter how many points you score. Back to action now, second and 10 for the Mustangs at the College Station 30 with 102 to go in the half. Shotgun formation, Dalton fakes the give, he's looking to throw. And he's gonna overthrow everybody into the end zone and it'll be third down now. Yeah, and that's uh, once again, you see when Kishon Cooper covers a guy, you're, you're not open. Now they're moving uh, Krupp on the other side and it's a good matchup by Denim Day. and. Uh, that's the good thing is, you know, with what's coming up in the playoffs with Sherman, you know, as far as you can go maybe after that, it's good to see Denim Day match up against the number one guy and get some stuff on film that they can coach off of. Third down and 10 now for the Mustangs at the College Station 30. 56 seconds. Clock stops on the incompletion. Shotgun formation for Dalton. Takes the snap. Under some pressure, but he gets it away. He's throwing to the left side. And it's incomplete intended for Collins. Running stride for stride out there with him was Zamarian Lofton, and it'll bring up fourth down. See if they're going to call a time. Nope. Uh, it looked like they were going to give 79 an injury timeout, but he's stayed up, and uh, they're not going to use a timeout before this fourth down play. 51 seconds on the clock, fourth and 10. College Station on top, 35 to 7. And actually now one of the offensive line from linemen, number 75 for Mag West, goes off. That is Grant Engelke. They're going to have to bring another lineman on, bring on number 68, Ty Burrows. And they're going to have to switch some of the linemen up because he's going to go in on the left side where, yeah, they'll call timeout. They've got to get a good play set up here on uh, fourth and ten. Mag West takes timeout. We'll take it with them. 51 seconds to go in the half. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Three, two, one. The countdown is over. Toyota's biggest event of the year, Toyota Vaughn, is on at Huntsville Toyota and the number one volume dealer in Brazos Valley, Bryan College Station Toyota. Don't wait. Toyota Vaughn deals start now. Get 1.9 APR on new 2020 Tacoma Special Editions. Low lease payments are available on new 2020 Camry LEs. Or grab 1750 customer cash on new 2020 Ram 4 LEs. Bryan College Station Toyota and Huntsville Toyota. The promise of something different. Fifty-one seconds to go in the first half. College Station in control, leading at thirty-five to seven. And as we come back to action, Magnolia West will be facing a fourth and ten at the College Station thirty-yard line. In an important ball game for Mag West, as we talked about, playoff implications yeah and going to the playoffs on a four game losing streak even if you do qualify not how you want to have your uh the second half of your season run college station as we've mentioned already clinched the second spot in the district cougars will be at home for the first round of the playoffs and right now it's looking like it's going to be the sherman bearcats as longview is dominating Shotgun formation, take the snap, it was low. Dalton pulls it down, he's able to throw it across the middle. He's got a receiver in the end zone. Did he haul it in? He did, touchdown, Mag West. That is number two, Trey Leggett, with the touchdown in the back of the end zone. I think that was Devin Wilson in coverage for the Cougars. Made a play on the ball, but he was unable to uh, dislodge it. Actually, I think that was Jones. six, Jones. Yeah. Byron jo Johnson, excuse me, Johnson, Byron Johnson. But a touchdown for Mag West. As it's now 35-13 with the extra point pending here from Daniel Horn.
The snap, the spot, the kick is up. It is good. And with 43 seconds to go in the first half, your new score, College Station 35, Magnolia West 14. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Glenn College is proud to support its local high schools this football season. For more than 137 years, Glenn and its caring professors have helped students reach their educational goals. Glenn offers nationally recognized academic transfer, dual credit, and career training programs with classes available online and on campus. Glenn students save 44% compared to the average state university, and classes are now open for registration. So learn more today. Click the visit button at glenn.edu and schedule your virtual visit with our friendly staff. Magnolia West converts on fourth and ten, and they cut into the Cougar lead with the touchdown. Seven plays, 69 yards. Uh, Dalton with that touchdown pass of 30 yards on fourth and ten, and a great catch. And, um, you know, now you see what they do on the kickoff here. Horn kicks it off. It's a high pooch kick. Left side, it'll be fielded, and the fair catch called for and made at the College Station 36-yard line. <laughs> and that's uh, Chase Birch. And you see the coaches, you mentioned it earlier on the last one, he didn't, you didn't think he I signaled it. I don't think it, he signaled did, it all that time. the coach is telling him, you got to put that hand up high, kid. you got to make sure they see that. Yes, uh, because uh, you don't want to get blown up with him coming down and tackling you at the 37-yard line. So let's see how aggressive the Cougars are here. Shotgun formation for Huff. Takes the snap. We've false got start. a penalty flag. False start. Coach Huff not happy about that at all. Fire the snap. False start. Number two, the offense. I think it trailing Sewell on that for yeah, the ball start. Yeah, it was just that uh, he yeah. went half a beat early. And, uh, you know, he was lined up in that bunch formation that was on the left-hand side. First penalty of the night called against the Cougars. Now they'll have it at their own 32-yard line. Shotgun formation again for Huff. Takes the snap. Fakes the give to Brown. He's going to throw to Carnes on the left side. Carnes makes the catch, dances around, gets a gain of about six. College Station has all three timeouts. They are not using one here as we are under 30 seconds. Shotgun formation again. Huff looking to throw. Throwing to the left side. He's got a receiver. It's Carnes. Hauls it in at the Magwest 30, and he's across the 25 and dragged out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Great pass over the shoulder right there to Carnes to get it down inside the 25. And uh, the Cougars decide they're going to play football for 24 full minutes here in the first half. That play took a little bit of time to develop, but a good job there by Huff of spotting Carnes as he fakes the give here to Brown. He's going to throw to the end zone on the slant. Houston Thomas, touchdown, Cougars! The Cougars get the ball to start the second half. They decide they wanted to play a little football tonight. And, um, you know, I think that the Cougars worked that two-minute offense pretty good right there. Here I am talking about they've got three timeouts left. They don't use a single one on that drive, and they score a touchdown. Shrimp on to add the extra point out of the hole to Slanker. Snap. And penalty flags before we get started. False start against the Cougars here. And there's that post pattern that they've been working with Thomas. Now that you've got to guard him, you know, 35 yards wide when he's their outside receiver, that's really changed a lot for the Cougar offense. I really think that is one of the main developments really since the Magnolia game that they were able not just to work him to the outside. So back him up five. And Tremp will try the extra point here. Snap, spot, kick is up. And it's through your new score with eight seconds to go. College Station 42, MagWest 14. We're going to keep it here as College Station adds to the lead and does so quickly. They got the ball with 43 seconds left. Yes. They needed 35 seconds to score. And uh, Scott's going to recap that drive for us here in a second. Yeah, it's going to just be three plays. It'll be 63 yards, even though they had it back to the 32-yard line. And then 24-yard touchdown pass to Thomas from... Uh, Jet Huff, but, uh, you know, just a, a tremendous job of moving the football down the field. Yeah, that's something that this Cougar offense has shown all season long, that ability to strike and strike quickly. And uh, 
once again, the big pass to Carnes to get it into Magnolia West territory, and then they run the slant pass to Thomas for the touchdown. And that's the other thing, dangerous receiving core. I mean, this receiving core for College Station, we don't even get to talk about Will Henson much. A great feature today on him and the Eagle by uh, uh, Alex Alex Miller. Yeah, I, I, you're exactly right. And, you know, that's the thing. We don't get to talk about him a lot. He's had one touchdown catch, but we don't get to talk, we don't get to talk about Cash Richter a whole lot. You know, you got Traylon Sewell, you got Carnes, you got Thomas, and we didn't get to talk about Thomas a lot in the early going either. Tremble ready to kick this one off. Good, high, deep kick, and it's going to go into the end zone for the touchback. And check up at the one-yard line. <laughs> How about that? It bounced one yard deep and then came out. Yep. What, what high school kickers do now, the NFL kickers couldn't even imagine 25 years ago. Yeah. And that's become such an important part of the game, too, because... You know, you kick that, you don't allow them to get that chance to break one for a touchdown. And, and you're seeing more and more kids that are kicking it into the end zone and not allowing the offense or the uh, receivers to get ahead of steam and try and take it back. First and 10 for Mag West at its own 25. Eight seconds to go in the half. We'll see how they play it. No pad stats here. Dalton hands it off to the running back. He's going to go up the middle. He's got a big hole. He's at the 40 and knocked down. And that is going to be number 85, Sam Mattingly. He's going to have the first down as he gets up near the 45 of Mag West. But that's going to be the final. Oh, nope. Mag West called the timeout before time expires. Three, Three seconds. seconds. Okay. So Mag West will get one more play. And he got all the way up to the 44-yard line. So give them a chance to throw the ball deep. But, I, you know, what the Cougars have done here in this first half, you know, has really, uh, you know, controlled the line of scrimmage. And, you know, I'm going to go back and look. I don't think that Huff has an incomplete pass today. I can't remember one. Yeah, he had one. He overthrew a receiver. He overthrew, he overthrew a receiver down here on the, on the okay, right side. So I believe, I'm pretty sure. Still, when you're going at 71% yeah. and then we have to scramble to try to find an incompletion, and, you know, it, you're, not, you're not playing Cleveland and, and Caney Creek yeah. right now. Yeah, he had the one in the end zone that he was trying to hit Cash Richter. Right. And, there you and go. That, that's the one I can think of. So I thought he said put three seconds back on the clock. There is only one second on the clock. It's okay. It's only going to be the last snap, yeah. even if it's uh, just for one second. Ball is at the Mag West 44-yard line. And you've got five defenders deep for College Station. They're not going to let anybody get behind them as Dalton's going to throw this one down the middle, and it's going to be incomplete. And that'll be the final play of the first half. It's another good one for College Station. The Cougars leading it 42-14. to 14. And, Scott, we, we've seen it all season long, this quick strike offense, and uh, really quick on that final possession of the half as they scored in 35 seconds. Yeah, and, I, you know, that's exactly how you want to end a half, especially when you get, get the ball to start the second half. And you've the, the way you have dominated uh, a team that's fighting for the playoffs, that's how you have to play when you're about to roll into the playoffs. You're not taking anything for granted. You are playing at your highest efficiency you've had this year. 42 to 14 at the half. We're going to send it back to the station. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Buying a car isn't just about the coat. All right, guys, 23 minutes. Thank you. It's What's finding up for? the right fit, the right feel, the things that put a smile on your face. It's about the joy ride, not only for you, but for your best friends and family. At Aggieland Credit Union, we'll help make your new car dreams a reality with rates as low as 1.79% APR. Aggieland Credit Union, we're with you every step of the way. APR is annual percentage rate. Terms and conditions apply. What does comfort sound like during football season? 
While they sweat it out on the field, you'll enjoy the game from a perfectly heated and air-conditioned living room thanks to Airify AC. Whether it's full-service installations, upgrades, or repairs, our team can tackle any issue. And right now, get 10% off service and parts for any job in your small. Keep your hands both cool and cozy on game day. Go to airifyac.com. A-E-R-I-F-Y-A-C.com. Airify AC. Keeping Texas comfortable. Blend College is proud to support its local high schools this football season. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the field a band whose performances redefine halftime, an ensemble that combines music and marching with confidence, power, and precision. A 2019 UIL Area 1 marching band finalist. You know them, you love them, they are the College Station High School Mighty Cougar Band! The drum majors for the Cougar Band are Benjamin Roberts, Ariana Chisholm, Mary Claire Phelps, and Sienna Healy. And now, tonight, for the last time this season, we will perform our 2020 marching show, Beatlemania, featuring music of the British rock sensation from the Beatles, including Magical Mystery Tour, Lady Madonna, Blackbird, Yesterday, 
Eleanor Rigby, and Hey Jude. And now, here is your mighty Cougar Band. Band.
Try me, Don't boy. I be with my squad. Squad it. Squad. Catching bodies, bang, boy. Bang. Yo, we too deep. Talking crazy. That'll get your money. Coming down the hill. Boy, we real. And we getting turned. Turn up, turn up, turn up. Hit the field. And we shut them down. Turn up, turn up, turn up. Turn, up. turn this valley to a body sound. Everybody going nuts. Yeah, we hitting hard and showing up. Offense and boys, they going crazy. And the defense turning up. Now we just ain't got no chill, you know we for real We turn it when we hit the field Everybody with us is real And they going crazy like soon as we run down the hill That's all you gon' hear when we knocking you out You thought you was real, but that's not what you bought We had to wait until we get our directives from the health department. And so we are sending out information today. Some of our people who we sent home at one point get to come back a little earlier now because they've changed the rules, and we're happy about that. Um, I guess the next question would be, how has CSISD done so far uh, this year in dealing with COVID cases and, and having students out? Well, I, I think we're, we're doing very well. Um, if, if you'll look on our, C, our CSISD webpage, we have a new, um, a new site up today that has our, we're doing things a little differently, and it's going to show how many people are out, how many, how many students are out, how many teachers are out, how many close contacts are out, how many are returned, and um, then the percentage, and it has how many students we have enrolled in the district, how many teachers we have, so it shows the percentage, so we're doing quite well. Again, visiting with CSISD Director of Student Services, Chrissy Hester. She's been in that role for quite some time now. Um, the amount of time that you've been with CSISD, uh, a good question would be from that, what makes it such a great place to work at and obviously the Bryan College Station area, such a great place to live in? Well, it's the kids and the families that we get to interact with every day and the staff here at the district. It's a wonderful place to work and be. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people would share your sentiments, including myself, from living in Bryan College Station. Um, besides, obviously, COVID-19 has, has kind of made that your top priority, I'm assuming, within your job. But um, how does that affect, or I should say, how much are you able to, to interact and delve with uh, at-home learning? I, I know that you guys love to have the students there in class, but the at-home learning aspect. Does your job involve any of that, if at all? Um, my job does not involve that. That okay. really comes from C&I, and I, and so I don't, I fortunately don't have to deal with that enough, <laughs> although my job entails all the parent complaints and frustrations, so I get a lot of the phone calls about how frustrated they are with that. Gotcha. So I balance it emotionally for people, maybe. And that'll wrap up part one of our visit with CSISD Director of Student Services, Chrissy Hester. Coming up next, the second half of tonight's game. I'm Zach Taylor, and you're listening to I'm Zach Taylor, and you're listening to College Station Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Looking to buy a home or make improvements? Need a loan? Talk to Prosperity. Our bankers know how to walk you through the process. We offer multiple loan options customized to your individual needs. Building a new home? How about a loan that offers a one-time closing at the title company? Prosperity can do that. Prosperity, the big bank with your community's bank inside, where you find real bankers, not just a bank. All loans subject to credit approval. This ad is not a commitment to lend. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. NMLS 466414. Have questions about connecting new gas appliances, pool heaters, whole house generators, or propane grills? Call the propane experts at JMB Propane. With a long list of satisfied customers throughout the nine counties in the Brazos Valley, we are ready to take your call. Focused on safety, we promise prompt, courteous, and reliable service, and the most competitive rates around. This is Jeb Blair asking for the opportunity to serve you and your family. Visit jmbpropane.com for your free estimate today. Oh no, here they come again. Careful, please. Ow.
Ow, ow, ouchie. Hello? This is your floor speaking. After 20 years of hard work, I need to call Zwarnemann Flooring so that I can retire. If your old floors are talking to you, call Zwarnemann Flooring at 979-776-2800, click zfloors.net, or stop by our new showroom. We look forward to working with you to update your home and help those old floors finally retire. Kelly Burt Dozer has been clearing the path for progress for over 35 years. So before construction ever starts on any new home or business, your first thought and your first phone call should be Kelly Burt Dozer. Since 1978, Kelly Burt Dozer has handled hundreds of jobs throughout the Brazos Valley. They know the obstacles you must overcome to successfully excavate and fully prepare this terrain with efficient solutions to ensure a job well done, no matter your time frame or budget. That's Kelly Burt Dozer. Call 778-1902 or click kellybertdozer.com. Forty-two to fourteen at the half. College Station on top of Magnolia West. Tim Schneller, Scott Clendon, and welcoming you back for quarter number three in the second half of football in the final regular season game of the year. College Station, of course, the two seed in the playoffs heading into next week. More than likely, going to be facing Sherman as Longview is on top of Tyler, big at the half. And uh, if they do face Sherman, I believe the game will be it, – it, it's going to be here no matter who they face. But right now I believe it's set for 2 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Well, and the, and the Cougars, uh, you know, uh, it putting themselves in the position to advance. And uh, Mag West putting them in a position to uh, fold up that, uh, you know, two-story inflatable and use it next year when they play a non-conference uh, game uh, sometime in September, early August because – um, you know, they're going to lose tiebreaker to uh, Porter and uh, New Caney. So after uh, running out to a 4 and nothing uh, district record, they're looking like yeah, they're going to get sent home. And we talked about how, you know, you are going to have playoff caliber teams. Illegal formation right now for Magnolia. They can't uh, line up and have this formation. So now they're going to they have a normal formation to kick off with Coop. They, they will kick off to start the second half. And they're offsides. that's going to be offsides. Yeah. They're, they're trying to do all kinds of trickery, and they threw their, themselves off. All right. They got the football. And but we'll it's not going to matter. Yes. I mean, they did all kinds of trickery. They lined everybody up to well, one side. you don't side need to set then, any plays for yeah. the playoffs. <laughs> and then moved everybody around, and then the kicker, or crop, acted like he was going to kick it. Well, one of their players went off sides. So it just, they, they tricked themselves out. Yeah. Jet Huff, he was 13 of 25. He had back-to-back -back incompletions. 13 of 15. 13 of 15. Back to had the back-to-back -back <laughs> okay, incompletions. He, uh, he threw for 212 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. So still above that 71% uh, season. And um, as good as Dalton's been, I think Jeff Huff's making a play to be uh, first-team all-district as your kicker. I mean, he's your quarterback. We're going to try and get quarter number three started here. It's brought to you by Kelly Burt Dozer, your number one excavating contractor. Kelly Burt Dozer, 7781902, proudly supporting the youth of our community. Crop puts the ball on the tee for Magnolia West. And now they're doing it again. They send everybody but one over to this side of the field. Crop acting like he's going to kick the onside kick. He fakes it. They all move to the other side. Line up now in a normal formation, and Crop will fake a kick again. This time they come around, they kick the onside. It's gonna bounce, it's gonna be fielded by College Station. A good job there of going up to get that ball for the Cougars. I believe that was number 28, Bobby Drake. 25, oh, excuse me, 25. So we'll get into plus territory again at the 47 yard line. So College Station does not fall for the trickery either time. Use all your trick plays. You're not going to need them next week. First and 10 at the 47. Shotgun formation. Huff's going to throw out to the left side to Sewell. Looking for a block. Still dancing around. He's going to be into Magnolia West. Actually, they started Magnolia West territory, so he gets across the 40. Actually, no, they mark him back at the 41. So give him six on the play. Now... Sewell's going to line up in the backfield with Huff as they send Brown out. Now Sewell will motion out of the backfield, so nobody in the backfield. And Huff fumbles the snap. He's going to have to get back on it. He does, but it's a loss back to the 45. Started moving his feet, looking downfield before he had it, it looked like. 
Third down now. And eight needed for the first down here for College Station on the opening drive of the half. Cougars on top, 42 to 14. We are just underway here in quarter number three. Shotgun formation again for Huff. Brings Sewell in motion from left to right. Huff's going to roll to his right, looking to throw. He's going to throw to, to Thomas. Thomas is going to bring it in. He's going to be deep in Magnolia territory, all the way down inside the 15 and ridden out of bounds, but not before he gets to the 14-yard line. Yeah, going to run the flag pattern right there as they've uh, shown the post, they've shown the out. So uh, once again, Dylan Thomas, his role continues to expand for the Cougars. First and 10 from the 14 now. Shotgun formation, they're going to hand it off to Brown. Brown's going to hit the right side of the line and he'll fall forward for about three. College Station looking to increase its lead here on the opening drive of the first half. We're going to have an offensive lineman checking out here. Number 62, that's Tyler Christensen, comes off the field limping a little bit. Got to stay away from the injuries here when you're starting the playoffs next weekend. Logan Bradshaw checks in in his place. <clears throat> Play clock down to 10. Huff takes the snap, drops back. Here comes the blitz, and he's going to be knocked down. Just got a hand on him and was able to drag him down. Was number five for Magnolia West. That is Landon Thomas. Third sack because that fumble uh, earlier in this drive was a sack, but that's the second time that he's got after okay, Huff. That was actually Brady Digart. My, my apologies. And, 12, and it's going to be third and 12 now for College Station at the Magnolia West 16 yard line. Just went under 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Two receivers to each side of the formation. Shotgun formation for Huff with Brown to his right. Huff takes the snap, drops back. Good protection. He's going to throw to the middle of the end zone. Touchdown. Here comes a late flag, and I believe this one's going to be against. Well, we're not sure now as the Cougars all stop. Let's see what the call is here. If it's. If the touchdown stands, it was Traylon, uh, Traylon Sewell on the reception, but it looks like this one may be coming back. Personal foul. Shot block number one and number 76 of the offense. 15-yard penalty, still third down. Moving back to the 31-yard line now is that's a big penalty right there. Well, yeah. and you know normally you have it with two offensive linemen right. well engaged, uh, and Brown went to the ground, and uh, he's still looking over the sideline, kind of like what happened to you know. And uh, that's where they got the uh, chop block. But, you know, now you open up all that field as they're going to decline the penalty. Okay, 31-yard line. There we go. Yeah. The <laughs> offense. By the way, we're going all the way back to the 41. Yes. So it's at the 31. They need the four-yard line for a first down. Shotgun formation for Huff. Here comes some pressure. He steps up, and now he's going to throw. And it's incomplete intended for Traylon Sewell. And that'll set up fourth down as Huff took a late hit there. Got popped. Leave the offense on. Yeah. Number two, Traylon Sewell. Gonna bring up a fourth down for Cougar. So still need to get 27 yards. So uh, call out that fourth and 27 play. Surprising they're not dropping their secondary back. Uh, get good blocking here in the way the Cougars uh, – have run away from coverage tonight, get a chance to uh, get a touchdown play. Shotgun formation. They're going to fake the give. They're going to throw the slant. It's caught by Carnes. He's dancing around. He's at the 15-10, gets a block. Touchdown, Cougars! Flag, Flag on the play. On the play. Oh, geez. <laughs> well, this is just taking all the life out of the Cougars as they try to increase their 42-14 to lead. An eligible receiver downfield, number 58 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So take it back. The second time on this drive that a touchdown has been called back for College Station. I would probably have your secondary a little bit deeper. Cougars will because you're trying to defend the four-yard line. 
Cougars will keep the offense on the field. The ball is at the Magnolia West 36. I guess so. Cougars get to practice plays they're going to even use Fourth and week. 32, shotgun formation. Now, I think Huff's going to punt this. He is. It's a quick kick, but there's another flag that stops the play. False start. Th this has just been <laughs> one, one miscue after another. False start, number 58. Offense. This is the kind of drive that will give a coach gray hairs. Still fourth down. And I think the couple of these penalties have been on a backup offensive lineman that was out there. But that's okay. That's one of the things about, hey, you've got to be ready to go out there, be locked in, and they'll uh, have good film to show him as far as that uh, next week. So now they'll bring the punt team on as the ball is back at the Mag West 41-yard line. Shrimp will put his foot into this one. And he's going to kick this one into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. College Station football brought to you this season by Aggieland Credit Union. Truly free checking with no minimum balance and no monthly fees. Save by switching today at AggielandCU.org. By Blinn College, your college, your future. By Daily Company, electrical, HVAC, and plumbing services you can count on. Read reviews at dailycompany.net. And by Max Food Mart. Max Food Mart, fill up your tank at three College Station locations on Barron, Rock Prairie, and Welburn Roads. Well, see what the defense does here against Dalton here. His last two drives have been touchdown drives. And once again, 85 as their short uh, running backs is going to line up in the backfield. Shotgun formation. Dalton rolls to his right. He's How about a hold? To throw. Under some pressure, lets this one go, and it's going to be picked off by Keyshawn Cooper. Oh, now they're saying incomplete. One, one no, referee no, saying he bobbled no. it. No, the far referee saying I understand that, but the it. field yeah. judge is going to come in and say he was down. Nope, they're going to overrule it and say he was bobbling it. Well, no, uh, Coach Huff is not happy about it, and I understand why. Yeah. Coach Huff is not letting up on that referee. But, you know, like Caney Creek felt earlier this year, when you're down so much, you get some calls. Second down now. They're going to fake the give. They'll throw the screen. A wide open receiver. He's got the first down and more. He'll go out of bounds at the – let's see where they finally mark him. Trey Leggett with the catch. They'll mark him at the 35-yard line. So the Cougars had two touchdowns called back by penalty here in the uh, second half and an interception. Um, overturned. You know, overturned, so some kind of questionable plays there. First and ten. Shotgun formation, fake the give. They're going to throw. It's tipped, intercepted by Harrison Robertson. He's going to take it all the way back inside the ten-yard line. And it will be first and goal for the Cougars. Now we've got, is there another flag somewhere? Sideline warning. Ah, sideline warning against Mag West. Okay. So Harrison Robinson with the interception, his second of the season. And the Cougars have it first and goal at the Magnolia West five yard line. Not sure who got their hand on that to tip it, but it was tipped up into the air, and then Harrison Robinson picked it off. Yeah, and just a great job of uh, getting the ball down the field and. Uh, you know, so you had one touchdown come off the board. You just follow that up with another one. Shotgun formation for Huff. Brown behind him. Fakes the give. Rolls to his right. Gets a block. He's going to throw to the end zone. And that's hauled in. Touchdown, Cougars. That's going to be Cash Richter with the touchdown catch. Great job catching that, getting the feet down as he's going out of bounds on the rollout. So the uh, Cougars get a five-yard touchdown. Quick drive right there, isn't it? Cash Richter on the touchdown reception. Cash Richter with the touchdown reception. We talked about in the first half how we haven't had gotten a chance to say his name a lot this season, but he comes up big right there with the touchdown catch. The extra point from Dawson Shrimp is up, and it is good. Your new score with 8.44 to go in the third quarter. College Station 49, Magnolia West 14. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9.
Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline helps keep your engine running like new. With four levels of defense against gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. <laughs> it's sort of like having ninjas protect your engine. It's fuel for thought. In engines that continuously use Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. Fuel up with Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline at Max Express on Welburn Road. And while you're there, fill up with all your favorite snacks, chips, drinks, candies, and more. Max Express is your game day snack stop on Barron Road, Rock Prairie, and Welburn. Cougars turn a turnover into points, and they lead it 49-14 to with 8.44 to go in quarter number three. Yeah, five-yard touchdown pass to Cash Richter from... Chad Huff and makes it 49-14, and the Cougars uh, really getting after Mag West right now. Defense had a touchdown taken off the board. They nearly had a pick six there. That was a 33-yard return of a uh, tipped ball. Ian Keck and Costello, Cody Costello back to receive this kickoff from Sam Tremble. puts his foot into it. This one is going to be fielded. No, it's going to go into the end zone. Touchback. And it'll be first and 10 for MagWest at its own 25-yard line. College Station football brought to you this season by Prosperity Bank. Real bankers, not just a bank. Prosperity Bank member FDIC. And by Bryan College Station Toyota, a new kind of different. Tim Schneller, Scott Clendenin, final regular season game. Playoffs start next week for College Station. They will be at home for week number one. As they have wrapped up the two seed in District 8, 5A. Shotgun formation for Dalton. He rolls to his right. He's going to throw. Has a receiver caught right at the sideline. And then out of bounds is Leggett with it. And he'll get a gain of about seven. Pretty safe pass pattern right there, working Leggett to the outside. Quickly back to action. Sam Mattingly in the backfield with the quarterback. They're going to hand it off to Mattingly, and he's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for maybe a half a yard. Has to bring up third and three. I don't think they gave him any progress on that. I think that was a pretty bad spot there. I thought he had about a half yard. Maybe he got a uh, got his forearm down when he was trying to stay up. Third and three for Magwest. Dalton takes the snap, fakes the give to Mattingly. He's going to throw to the right side. It's caught by Crop. He makes a move inside, and he's going to take this one to the house. Touchdown, Magnolia West. Denim Day jumped the uh, route there and unable to uh, then catch up as it was a perfect pass right on the money to Crop. Magnolia West with their third score of the night. Comes with 7.51 to go in quarter number three. Don't need to save any of that air for the air horn. <laughs> On to add the extra point is Daniel Horn. And the kick is up. It's good. Your new score was 7.51 to go. College Station 49, Magnolia West 21. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Three, two, one. The countdown is over. Toyota's biggest event of the year, Toyota Fawn, is on at Huntsville Toyota and the number one volume dealer in Brazos Valley, Bryan College Station Toyota. Don't wait. Toyota Fawn deals start now. Get 1.9 APR on new 2020 Tacoma Special Editions. Low lease payments are available on new 2020 Camry LEs. Or grab 1750 customer cash on new 2020 Ram 4 LEs. Bryan College Station Toyota and Huntsville Toyota. The promise of something different. College Station High School Football is brought to you by Intech Pest Management. Service and professionalism since 1995. This is Maverick 100.9 KVMK. We lock Bryan College Station. Magnolia West with a big strike touchdown, and they cut into the College Station lead. Well, they're going to line up to uh, have a uh, directional kick here, and I bet you Chase Birch gets that hand straight up in the air before he catches this one. 
7.51 to go in the ball in the third quarter, excuse me. College Station on top, 49-21. This is going to be an onside kick, and it's still rolling around, and Mag West gets it, but was he in bounds? No, he was not. So the Cougars get the ball at the 37-yard line. Well, that was dangerous because that ball was rolling around, and there was a Magnolia West person there, but he could not stay in bounds when he recovered it. Flag on the play was not touched. Ah, so that'll be kick out of bounds then. Yep, get five yards from the end of that play and be able to start well, at the... <laughs> kick off out of bounds on the kicking team. Member of the kicking team touched the ball a lot out of bounds. By rule, that's kick out of bounds. Five yard penalty from where it went out. First down, College Station. Okay. And College Station's ready to go. <laughs> the offense is at the ball, ready to go, first and 10. From their own 43-yard line, shotgun formation for Huff brings a receiver in motion. They're going to pitch in him. That's Carnes. Carnes on the jet sweep. There's a flag. That's going to be a penalty against the Cougars as Carnes gets up to the 45. But I believe this is going to be a hold. Yeah, with him able to get two yards there, they'll definitely take the penalty. Oh. Still waiting on the call from the referee. He's the one who threw it. Holding number 70 of the offense. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. That's on the center for College Station. And that'll make it first and 20. So the Cougars have done a jo nice job of staying away from the penalties in the first half, but here in the second half, starting to pile up a little bit on them. As Huff in the shotgun formation, fakes the give. Good protection. Now he's going to roll. He's going to throw wide open is Roderick Brown at midfield. 40 and knocked out of bounds at about the 36-yard line of Mag West. Actually, they'll mark him at the 35. That's a big gain and a first down on first and 20. That's just your, your running back turning into a receiver, getting to open space and then making a great catch away from his body. And, uh, you know, a huge gain right there for the Cougars. First and 10 at the Mag West 35. Pitch it back to Brown. He's going to hit the hole. He's got the 30, 20. Actually, he doesn't get quite to the 20 before he stood up. Mark him at the 21. But a nice gain and another first down for the Cougars. USC student body right. Sweet pitch action there. You don't see that too often. But able to get the first down at the 22. Brown checks out to catch his breath. Marquise Collins checks in. Huff's going to pitch it to Collins. He'll try the same play off the right side. He's got a big hole. He's inside the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the 8. So you're exactly right. The exact same play. Hey, how do we stop having holding plays on pass plays? We stop throwing the football. First and goal now for the Cougars at the Mag West 8. They're going to run it again, except this time Collins fumbles the pitch. He's able to pick it up, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds, but he's going to lose a couple of yards there. He just had a hard time handling that pitch. Fortunate bounce, though, came right back to him. Haven't had very many negative running plays, but that's one right there. Mark him back to the nine, so a loss of one. Second and goal now. This time they're going to hand it off to Collins. He'll go right up the middle, push his way in. Touchdown, Cougars! Had to wait for the ref to signal. But Collins does get in on the touchdown, his second of the night. Doesn't take very long for the Cougars to answer, does it? No, it did not, just like they answered at the end of the first half. But it's what we've seen from this offense all season, quick strike. Shrimp on to add the extra point. S snap, spot, kick is up. It's good. Your new score with 6.33 to go in quarter number three. College Station 56, Magnolia West 21. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. 
Join conductor Marcelo Busicki and the Brazos Valley Symphony Brass as they present a virtual concert of the joyous sounds of the holiday season. This Brazos Valley tradition features organist James Faith, the Christ United Methodist Church Sanctuary Choir, and Canticle Ringers. Link to the concert will be sent to Via Video Ticket holders on December 17th. Via Video Tickets are now available online at bvso.org or by calling 845-1234. Welcome back. Cougars uh, have a six-play, 58-yard touchdown drive. The last uh, nine of that from Marquise Collins. 56-21 now, 6.33 to play. And he finally gets his first touchdown of the night. And the Cougars answer back and continue to have that uh, five-touchdown lead. Was I mistaken? Was that not his second? I yes, thought he had, I thought he had one yeah, in the first yeah, the, yeah, okay, the one-yard run. You weren't mistaken. Right? Okay. I was mistaken. Because I was going to say, I thought I said it was a second, but yes, did I misspoke right. on that? Did I misspoke? <laughs> <laughs> Travel to kick it off. He puts it high into the air. It's going to be fielded at the goal line. This is going to be Leggett. He's got the 10. Actually, I'm sorry. It's not Leggett. It's going to be number 21 on the return. That is Ian Keck. Number 21, Ian Keck. And Keck will get up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. 21-yard kickoff return. It'll be first and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 21. Still running the uh, first team uh, defense out there for the Cougars. Nope, Denim Day is coming off here after that kickoff return. Magnolia West will continue to put Sam Mattingly in the backfield with Dalton. Dalton takes the snap, gives it off to Mattingly. He'll start up the middle, bounce out left, and he'll get a nice gain up across the 25. Sam Mattingly. Tackle made by number 94, Isaac Alvarez. Give him five on the gain. It's not the uh, same kind of rushing attack without Bilbo, but, you know, the Cougars knew that then they would turn to the passing attack and a bit of an injury there. You want to stay away from that. Shotgun formation for Dalton. He's looking to throw. He's going to throw to the right side. It's going to be complete out there. That's Leggett. Makes a move, and he'll get up and get the first down. Dalton pass from boot number two, Trey Leggett. And a good job there making sure that you got him out of bounds. Don't want any more big plays. If they drive the field to get a, a score, you're just going to have to live with that. Two receivers stacked to each side of the formation. Mattingly in the backfield with Dalton. He fakes the give to Mattingly. He's looking to throw. Now he's going to be flushed out of the pocket. Gets away from one tackler, but he's not going to get away from the next one. He's going to be sacked by Jackson Slanker back around the 26-yard line. Looked like then he was going to try to uh, pull it down and run it, but then kind of fell backwards a couple steps, and then he was in the arms of Slanker, and no chance for him at that point. Loss of five sets up second and 15. Mag West running some players on and off. Dylan Crowhurst will check out. Wade Nobles will check in. Yeah, got to get some extra blocking there in front of him. Mattingly motions out of the backfield now. Shotgun formation. Dalton takes the snap, looking to throw over the middle. It's intended for Marcus Collins, and it's incomplete. He had to turn into, turn into a defensive back because that ball, he batted it away so it wasn't intercepted in the backfield by A.J. Tisdale. Yeah, Tisdale almost had the interception there. And it sets up third and 10 now, or excuse me, third and 15. Now Mag West will go with three receivers to the right. Yeah, but see the Cougars have changed up now and they've got Kashawn Cooper up there on Croup up top. Croup's over here on this side, isn't he? No, he's, no, up he's top. on the far side, okay. Dalton looking to pass. He's going to throw deep. He's looking for Croup. Croup pushes off. No flag, but the play is knocked away by Cooper. Here comes a late flag. We'll see who they call this on. They were hand fighting the whole way. Croup, crop push, pushed off, but I wouldn't be surprised if they call this on Keyshawn Cooper. Nope. Cooper's clapping. He heard him uh, say from one to another. So offensive pass interference if the Cougars want to move him back. Pass interference, number 13, the offense. Penalties declined. Result of the play is fourth down. Second time tonight they've got crop for that push off. 
And that'll bring out the punt team, which Crop is the punter. In the punt number 13, Jeffrey Crop, due to the Cougars number 11, Dalton Farms. They couldn't get the quick kickoff because they did bring some men on to the from the sideline. Crop puts his foot into it. Another good high kick. This kid can kick the heck out of the ball. That's going to hit and take a huge Magnolia West bounce, and it's going to check up and die at about the six-yard line. Another good putt by Crop. He's done a little bit of everything tonight for Magnolia West. Has the big touchdown reception. And he has punted the heck out of the ball tonight. That's only uh, 70 yards. Yeah. Pins the Cougars back at their own six-yard line. 4.37 to go in the third quarter. College Station on top, 56, 56 to 21. Well, long field for the Cougars now. They've played against a short field. This is... Without a doubt, their worst field position of the night. Collins in the backfield. They're going to give it to him. He's looking for room off the left side. He's not going to find much. Does get a couple of yards. Actually, it ends up getting a four-yard gain as they mark him at the 10. In a four on the play, it'll be second and six for the Cougars. And the Cougars don't have to be in any hurry with this 56-21 lead. We approach four minutes to go in the third quarter. Huff takes the snap, gives it off to Collins. He's going to bust through the middle, and he'll have the first down as he gets up near the 18-yard line. Well, as they gave up two guys with 260 yards rushing last week uh, along the same kind of uh, ability for the Cougars to switch in and not have any drop-off in talent with Collins going in for Brown. First and 10 now for the Cougars at their own 18-yard line. Shotgun formation again for Huff. Takes the snap. This time he's looking to throw. He's going to roll away from pressure on the right. He's got a toss off to Houston Thomas who goes up high to try and get it, but he's not able to haul it in as it was just too tall. Good coverage there by Caden Robertson. Caden Robertson's a big old guy out there in the secondary. Holding. Matched up against Thomas. The offense, half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Another holding penalty on the Cougars. Robinson, one of their seniors, playing his last high school football game tonight. So takes it back to the nine-yard line. Shotgun formation for Huff. He's got Collins behind him. He's going to throw the screen out to Traylon Sewell. Waiting on a block, gets one, and then he's going to be wrestled down out of bounds. That looked that close place, to a that face, face mask. mask. Field judge saw it. Did he? Okay. Line judge was behind him and yeah, couldn't, couldn't see, see it, but the field judge saw that with him reaching up there and getting in the face mask. And that was right in front of the Cougar bench, so you had every coach over there helping him First with that foul. call. Face mask, number four of the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. It's a big penalty there. That moves the ball all the way out to the College Station 33-yard line. First and 10 Cougars. 320 and counting here in the third quarter. Going to hand it off to Collins. He'll go up the middle. Big hole. He's going to take this one all the way to the house. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Cougars. It's just like, what did, what did the Cougars want to do? Uh, and uh, it going to eclipse 60 again. As uh, that's been a popular score for your Cougars this year, going over the 60-point barrier. Well, Marcus Collins, you, you get him in the open field, and there are not many people that are going to catch him, and you saw it right there. He got through that hole, and he just pulled away from the defense, and nobody had a shot at him. That kid has so much speed, and he's just a sophomore. As he scores for the third time tonight. Sideline interference on Mag West. Phillies decline. Touchdown. Touchdown. 
Uh, yeah. Well, Ethan. the wheels have come off for Mag West. When you get a sideline uh, interference uh, running in uh, with your official going down the sideline when the uh, run is to the opposite side. Shrimp on to add the extra point out of the Holt Slanker. The snap, the spot, the kick. Up and good. 3.03 to go. Third quarter, College Station 62, Magnolia West 21. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick. Excuse me, 63-21. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. The Christmas song offers greetings to kids from 1 to 92. That's the age range invited to experience Christmas at the tree farm at Brazos Valley Tree Farm. They saw a need for an inexpensive Christmas experience, so they created one a drive through light show and a magical long hayride that makes a stop in a Christmas town. Bustling with food trucks, games, s'mores making, and Santa and his elves every Thursday through Sunday. Christmas at the Tree Farm opens November 9th, seven days a week. Get all the details at bvtreefarm.com. Another big play for College Station, and they lead it 63-21. to 21. Third touchdown run of the night for Collins. <laughs> 67 yards to cap that. Five play, 94 yard drive. So that punt down inside the 10 yard line, tremendous kick, just gives the Cougars more yards of offense when they get their touchdown drive. 63 21. And that is going to be the uh, third, uh, fourth game in a row where the Cougars have scored more than 60 points in district play. We still have a whole quarter of football to play as well. 303 left in this in the third quarter as Tremble puts his foot into it, and it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback as College Station well in control on this one and on the way to victory number nine on the season. A couple plays in the first quarter against Magnolia. You're state ranked, you're undefeated, you're district champion. Yeah. The Cougars learned the lesson that day about finishing what they were doing on those drives, and they have not had issues since that game. Definitely, because they there were early in the game. It was in the first quarter. They yeah, had four, they had two quarter. or three times where they were down in scoring position and could not get any. They got a field goal out of one of them. Got a field goal. Had the yeah. interception yeah. on the on the one that the Huff was trying to throw it away, making the right yeah. call, and it but got he caught up in the wind. Got Remember? caught up in the wind. Yeah. Yes, it did. Dalton takes the snap, hands it off to Matty Lee, and he'll go up the middle. Gain of four on the play. You know, and I've started to talk about it. Uh, Marquise Collins, just a sophomore. And that's what's fun about this team. There is a lot of youth on this team, and they're going to be fun to watch in the years to come. And there's a lot of talent coming up through the JV ranks. Undefeated through, JV. And, I mean, yeah. there, there's a lot of talent in this program right now. No doubt. And, um, you know, we got playoff football to come, but uh, – Eight offensive starters, seven defensive starters back for next year. So this is uh, only going to get better for the Cougars. Hand it off to Matting Lee again. He's going to have room for the first down. Does a nice job of avoiding some tackles and gets up across the 35 to the 37. A nice run there by Matting Lee. Kid who's listed as a wide receiver, and they're using him in the backfield tonight. As we talked about earlier, they're without their leading running back, Hunter Bilbo. Shotgun formation again for Dalton. Fakes the give this time, and now he's going to throw. It was intended for Krupp. He turned the wrong way. It's intercepted by the Cougars. That's going to be Byron Johnson. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10, and he's knocked down inside the 10-yard line. Looked like there was some confusion there as Krupp turned around, and the ball was on its way, and so it made for an easy interception there for Johnson. Yeah, but then Johnson showed his speed to able to get down and unfortunately uh, number 74 one of their offensive linemen got hurt at about the 25 yard line trying to make a tackle but uh, you know almost took that one all the way back so the uh, Cougars now have the ball you know inside the 10 yard line again that was Blaze Brown the offensive lineman who Try, he was trying to, he was over here on this side of the field trying to walk and then couldn't get all the way there, so I had to get some help to get off. But he is limping off the field, and we hope that he's okay as College Station now with the ball first and 10, excuse me, first and goal at the Magnolia West 9 after the interception and return by Byron Johnson. 
See who we have in at running back. Do we get a change, or is it still Collins? That's going to be Collins out there. Huff at the quarterback position still. Two receivers to the right. Bring a receiver in motion now, fake to him. Actually, they do pitch it to Cash Richter, trying to run the jet sweep. He's going to be strung out, and a nice play there, no gain. Good job by Jackson Blank on the tackle. Yeah, that wasn't a pitch forward, so not a, com uh, a pass attempt, just uh, trying to get the jet sweep there and lose a yard back to the 10. Did lose a yard on the play, sets up second and goal from the 10. Cougars letting the clock run now. Almost to a minute left in the third quarter. Shotgun formation again for Huff. This time he's going to hand it off to Collins. Starts up the middle, breaks out to the right side, takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars. He wanted to hit that guy. He did. You saw him slow because up. Because he slowed up. Yes, he, he had did. a wide open run into the emblem over here on the right side, and he went looking for the safety on that touchdown run. He sure did. You saw him slow up and cut back towards him. He went after JT Phillips and takes it in the end zone for his fourth score of the night. It's like the, it wasn't Dan Moore, but the Aggie offensive lineman against LSU when yeah. he picked up that ball, yep. went looking for a defender yes, with did. the ball in his hands. The extra point from Shrimp is up and good. 105 to go, quarter number four, or three, excuse me, quarter number three, year new score, College Station 70. Magnolia West 21. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. For a community to be better, a community has to work together. And the Robertson County Zero Tolerance Coalition is facilitating that work by promoting healthy behaviors, sparking and sustaining community change. They want everyone to have a voice and understand that actions have social consequences. Alcohol and marijuana use can have profound effects on a child's brain. To find out how you can help build a stronger community, find Robertson County Zero Tolerance on Facebook or call 979-846-3560. Marquise Collins having himself a night as he takes it in for his fourth score of the night, and the Cougars lead at 70 to 21. Ten-yard touchdown run that capped the two-play nine-yard drive, and the Cougars now eclipse 70 for the uh, second time in district play and second time this season. Sam Tribble will kick it off for the Cougars once again. College Station football brought to you this season by JMB Propane, your local Aggie family-owned and operated propane provider since 1991. Visit jmbpropane.com. It's going to be fielded at the goal line by Ian Keck. And Keck is going to get across the 15, get stood up, and knocked down at about the 18-yard line. So still great coverage in the in the coverage unit. You're you're having the complete game, your your best game of the year, um, maybe outside of Lufkin, and uh, you know you're able to. Uh, control all three phases. Last week when kickoff coverage wasn't as good as what you wanted to see against Waller, I think the Cougars have certainly shored that up this week. First and 10 for Mag West at its own 19-yard line. Shotgun formation for Dalton. He's going to hand it off to Mattingly. And Mattingly is going to be hit and held to a one-yard gain. As we have 40 seconds and counting here in the third quarter. Uh, they will have to snap it one more time. There's an eight second differential. They are in no hurry as the play clock down to 14, game clock at 21. Shotgun formation, bring a receiver in motion, it's Leggett. And we're going to have whistles and flags. Snap in fraction, number 70, the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So basically the center moving the ball. Marks they'll they'll wind the clock here. That'll be the last play of the uh, third quarter. Yeah, they don't have to snap it, and they will not snap it. That'll take us into quarter number four. When we come back, College the Station floor. on top here, 70 to 21. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. 
Everyone makes mistakes. Mistakes can land you on the wrong side of the law. If so, you need someone on your side. Steve Gustitis, attorney at law, has over 20 years experience fighting felony and misdemeanor charges. Steve Gustitis will fight for you. Call now to set up your free consultation. 823-9111. Qualified people are ready to take your call. Call 823-9111 or visit gustituslaw.com to see how Steve Gustitis can put the law on your side. College Station well in control as we move to quarter four, which is brought to you by Ed Phillips Plumbing, the real 24-hour plumber, ed-phillips-plumbing.com. And during this quarter, we'll take another look at the scoreboard, which is brought to you by Arify AC, HVAC installs, upgrades, and repairs. Get 10% off any job, large or small. Go to arifyac.com, keeping Texas comfortable. College Station football is brought to you this season by Willis Custom Homes, serving the Brazos Valley with efficient, reliable, quality construction since 2003. Visit willishomestx.com and by Zwarneman Flooring for new flooring backsplashes and showers and remodels and new construction. Visit zfloors.net. Tim Schneller, Scott Clendenin, and Sean Burnett back at the station bringing you the final regular season game of the 2020 season. And as we come back to action, it's second down for Mag West at its own 15-yard line. Shotgun formation, fake the give, looking to throw is Dalton. He's going to be flushed out of the pocket. He'll keep it himself. He's going to get hit and drop down around the 19-yard line, so he'll pick up four. And that's the original line of scrimmage where the drive started. Actually, it's a yard beyond, and it'll set up third and nine. All right, uh, finals. Uh, we uh, have uh, Ryan Raiders, number one. They're maybe second-round opponent for the Cougars. They beat uh, number eight Lone Star 35-21. Magnolia wins a district title. They go undefeated in district play with a 35-14 win. Longview is going to win uh, district seven with a 49-7 lead over Tyler. Dalton back to pass, flushed out of the pocket. Now he's going to take off and he'll be run out of bounds well short of the first down. Good pressure there by the College Station defense. Let's see here. Uh, Lufkin leads Waller 49 to 13. So Lufkin's going to the playoffs. And it will be New Caney will be the fourth place team. With the way the season started for Lufkin, you didn't know if they were going to make the playoffs this year. And but they're going to end up third. They're going to end up third. A good job by the Panthers to come back and take that third spot. Uh, you mentioned Longview winning. With that Longview victory, that means that College Station will face Sherman next week in the first round of the playoffs. That game will be here at Cougar Stadium. Two o'clock on Saturday afternoon is the tentative schedule for that one. As Crop into punt now on fourth down. Good high kick once again. And the College Station coach is telling everybody, get away from it, get away. It takes a sideways bounce, and it'll be killed at the College Station 47-yard line. Let's see. Uh, Cleveland gets a victory. They're second of the year. They're first in district. They beat uh, Caney Creek 34-3. So poor Caney Creek goes 0-9 on the, the season, I believe, yes. was their overall record, and 0-8 and in district. Actually, they'll go 0-10, sorry, and 0-8 and in district for Caney Creek. Tough year for them. They were down a little bit. And as we talked about when College Station was playing them, this is not the district to be down in. No. Cougars take over first and 10 at their own 47. Jed Huff still in there. He's going to hand it off to Bradley Jones. And Jones will go off the left side and get across midfield into Magnolia West territory. Well, here's the problem. We've seen how Jones runs. Yeah. And uh, Jones ain't going to give up uh, any kind of uh, opportunities for the junior running back. He is in there along with Marquise Collins. Collins already with four touchdowns on the night. Looking, you've got uh, Bo Corton in there at a wide receiver spot. First time we've seen him. Will Henson in there. Shotgun formation for Huff. He's going to hand it off to Jones once again, and he'll get across the 45 up near the first down. And he does have enough for the first down. And you do have, uh, you know, uh, Collins out in front blocking for him. That's one of the great things about uh, this running back core. You got Roderick Brown over on the sideline. Uh, cheering his uh, backfield mates on. He still has his helmet on. He does, you know, you don't know if a, a, a equipment thing or something like that, and you have to go back out there. 
but I'd love to see him right behind uh, uh, Stoney Pryor cheering his teammates on. Chase Birch in at one of the receiver positions now as well. Huff going to hand it off to Collins this time. He'll go off the right side and scoot forward for a gain of about seven. Getting to see some of the backups in there now for College Station. Huff still in at quarterback. But you do have some of the backup offensive linemen in there. Well, Lucas Sampson standing right behind uh, uh, Coach Pryor as well. So, um, you know, he knows his time will be coming here in the fourth quarter. Huff takes a snap, hands it off to Jones. Starts up the middle, bounces outside, and he'll be knocked down near the first down marker. And the 21 Bradley Jones on the carry. He does have enough for the first down. So knocked out of bounds right there at the 33-yard line, right at the marker. Got Luke Pennick in along the offensive line. There are a couple seniors in that offensive line. They'll get one more home game. Kobe Palmcole in there. Also Connor Cortez. But this is important, important time to, you know, work on what you're going to do for this season and seasons to come for some of these young linemen. Sampson in now at the quarterback position, hands it off to Jones. He'll go up the middle. And uh, looking down there, Connor Cortez is in on the offensive line. He's a sophomore, and he's at the center position right now. So chance for him to get some experience there. three on the play. You've also got Logan Bradshaw in. He's a sophomore. Tate Vela, he's a sophomore in on the offensive line. So center over is all sophomores on the offensive line, center over to the left. Then you've got a junior at the right guard position in Kobe Palmcole. Like this pistol with the back there in the backfield. Hand it off once again to Collins. And he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and, and that's going to be Marquis it. Collins on the carry. Tackle number 32, K. Dunlap. So right now, the only senior along the offensive line is going to be number 75, Luke Pennick. Flag on the play now. <laughs> Waiting on the call here from the referee. After the play was over, a sportsmanlike conduct, number 16 from College Station. 15-yard penalty, the third down. They're going to call Marquise Collins there for the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. That moves the ball back to the Magnolia West 45-yard line. Checking in now is Devon Mitchell, or Davion Mitchell, excuse me. And Collins comes <laughs> off. I, uh, get, to, get talked to by one of the coaches right now. He's kind of tried to explain what happened, but uh, I like to go push it up at the scoreboard. Say, we don't need that at this point in time. Just telling him, hey, man, we don't need that. Samson hands it off to Mitchell. Mitchell off the right side, picks up about Jordan, four. Davion Mitchell. 7-11 and Colorado. counting. College Station it's football crazy, brought bro. to you by ASAP it's Equipment. Crazy. To purchase or rent premium equipment at affordable prices, visit ASAPEquip.com. And by Brazos Valley Orthodontics, creating beautiful smiles with traditional braces and Invisalign treatments, bborthodontics.com. Fourth down now, the Cougars will bring on the punt team. And in no hurry to get it off as Shrimp got it some last-minute instructions there. Play clock is at five. They're going to probably take the uh, delay a game penalty here. And there it is. We'll see if Mag West declines delay it. Delay game. Offense, number 19. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. So five-yard penalty will mark it back to the Mag West 46-yard line. Update a couple more scores. Longview on top of Tyler, 58 to seven, and they're not to the fourth quarter yet. <laughs> Lufkin beating Waller, 56-13 in the fourth quarter. 
Shrimp puts his foot into it. And fair catch being called for and made at the 15 yard line. And we've got whistles blowing. Looking, I don't see any flags. Don't have a running clock yet. Mag West will take over first and 10 at its own 15, 6 11 to go in the ball game. College Station on top, 70 to 21. That's a long month when you go from being tied for the district lead to wondering if they're going to have a running clock in the fourth quarter of your last game. Dalton in the shotgun formation takes the snap, hands it off to Mattingly. And Mattingly will get about a yard. Number 85, Sam Mattingly on the carry. Tackle man by number 53. Gain a one on the play for Mattingly. Brings up second and nine. Fake the give. Dalton looking to throw. He's going to throw right side. He's got a receiver wide open. And it's caught at the 45. And he's going to take this one all the way in for a touchdown for Magnolia West. That is going to be number 88, Marcus Collins. And he'll take it all the way for the Magnolia West touchdown. He's built like a, a tight end, but you can see why they don't keep him in line. He had a great job of getting out and beating coverage and catching that ball over the shoulders with his hands. So 84-yard touchdown. Horn on to add the extra point. It's up and good. Your new score with 5.33 to go. College Station 70, Magnolia West 28. You're listening to Cougar Football on Maverick 100.9. Shop local, buy local, say big deal. Hi, it's Jenny from your local big deal store. If you've never visited our website, you're missing out because we've partnered with some of the best local businesses in town. Dozens of gift certificates, all discounted, ready for you to buy today. Here are just a few of the businesses you'll find. Power Sports, iHeart Mac and Cheese, Front Street Burgers, and more. Visit AggielandBigDeals.com to save big. AggielandBigDeals.com. Well, it did not take Magnolia West long to score that touchdown, but it won't be enough as they still trail at 70 to 28 here in quarter number four. See if they uh, decide to go with the onside kick. College Station does have the hands team up. You've got Houston Thomas, Dalton Carnes, Will Henson. Kicking off of the Mustangs, number 17, Daniel Horn. Hands Lucas, team out there yeah. again with Lucas the Samson, onside kick. Zamarian Lofton. And it's going to be one of those pooch kicks, and it'll be fielded by who? I didn't even 21. see. 21. Okay. <laughs> well, it wasn't a pooch kick. He kicked that into the ground and popped it up that Did high. It? Okay. Bradley Jones fields it. Well, I had a hard time seeing that one. And then uh, Jones got it. And I just saw people go into the ground. Wasn't sure who yeah, came up with that. Yeah, can't fair catch that one yeah. because it was a kick off the ground. So he caught it and went right down to the ground and uh, did the right thing there. And College Station takes over first and 10 at its own 43-yard line. Lucas Sampson is the quarterback. Davion Mitchell and Bradley Jones in the backfield with him. Samson takes a snap. He's going to give it off to Jones. Jones tries to bounce it outside. Now he's going to get away, go all the way back from left to right. He's at midfield, 45-40, 30-20, and knocked down inside the 20-yard line. That was a great job by Jones as he came to the left, got bottled up, and then was able to bounce out and go all the way back across the right and take it deep into Magnolia West territory. And how about Samson running the whole way with him, looking for somebody to block? And, uh, you know, able to uh, uh, get that ball down. Now he's getting coached by Coach Pryor over here on the sideline. A 40 -yard run. What do you think the conversation was like? It wasn't very long. No, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, I would not think that you're looking to put the ball in the end zone right now. No. Not up 70 to 28. We're under five minutes. And the ball is at the Mag West 17-yard line. They're going to hand it off to Jones. He'll go right up the middle. 
Actually, excuse me, that was Davion Mitchell. Davion Mitchell, the Mitchell with a gain of about four. Three on the play, it'll be second and seven. And that's best thing, 14. Cougars, of course, in no hurry now to run any plays. Game clock at four and a half, play clock at 23. College Station well in control, leading at 70 to 28. And uh, took control early, and this one's really never been in doubt. Really, that first drive, three and out, the only time the Cougars haven't had really much success offensively. Samson takes the snap, hands it off to Jones, hops over one defender, and then is knocked down. No gain on the play. Tackle made by number 25, Mitchell Moore, number 32, K. Dunlap. Third down now. The clock game. continues to roll. Just going to let it go down under five seconds before the Cougars snap it. Samson hands it off to Mitchell. He'll go into the middle of the pile, and no gain on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. We'll see if the Cougars try a field goal here tonight. That's the only thing we they really have not uh, had a chance to work on is field goals. No, but they've had plenty of extra points. That yeah. one had the false start, so, so you move yeah, that back be, a little bit. We'll count yeah. that as the as your field goal thing because okay. the Cougars going to just run the ball up the middle again on fourth down. Clock will go under three minutes to play. Still 20 on the play clock. Samson in the shotgun formation, hands it off to Jones. Jones gets inside the 10. He'll be near the first down marker. He may have gotten this one. Uh, they're going to give him the first down. Nope. No. Comes up yes. about, a, no, about a half yard short. No, they marked it first down. The, uh, the white hat did not even look at the linesman because they marked it as a first down. Uh, it's... Defense coming onto the field for the Cougars. Offense coming on for Mag West. So a turnover on downs, and Mag, Mag West takes over at its own eight-yard line. But the, the Cougars also really, I think that conversation over on the sideline was, hey, if you go get a first down, that's fine. Don't, don't, take don't it get it in the purple. Yeah. Yeah, do not get it in the purple. Dalton hands it off. This time it's going to be... Number 21 running the ball. That is Ian Keck. And Keck gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. 220 and counting. Dalton fakes the give to Keck, looking to throw now. He's going to throw the slant pass to Crop. Crop's going to catch it right around midfield, and it's a foot race, but he's dragged down from behind on a nice play there by Anthony Tisdale Jr. Got a penalty. Where? Back. Uh, he's put it. He's uh, he put it in his pocket. He threw the flag, and then he picked it up and put it in his pocket. And Crop just now getting up, being helped up. Not sure if he had the wind knocked out of him because he got hit from behind. May have fallen on the ball there. And now the referee is telling them bring it back. Yes. Penalty, it's coming back. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 52, offense. Half of this is two gold. Still second down. Not sure what he did to warrant an uh, unnecessary roughness penalty, but it does wipe out the big game. So they don't get to pad the stats, and Crop comes up worse for the wear. You got to give that kid a ton of credit, though, man. He is he's a oh, ball he's a player. player. He he's is a good a player. Really good ball player. Now he played with an edge and uh, really got the uh, Cougars fired up. But he is, he is a heck of a ball player. A but I love punter. to see the, the touchdown saving tackle there in the yeah, secondary by Tisdale. by Tisdale. Yep. 
after he got beat on the cross pat or the uh, slant pattern, yeah, was he able gave to up catch inside up. position like he thought he was going to get some help. Dalton's going to throw the bubble screen to Collins out on the left side, and Collins will get across yeah, the ten. Marcus Collins, and he'll get up Michael near the fourteen. It's Marion Lofton on the tackle. Clock now at one and a half. He's nine to the thirteen yard line. Thirty six. <laughs> Dalton in the shotgun formation has Keck back there with him. Two receivers on each side of the formation. Fakes the give to Keck. He's hit as he throws, and that ball goes out of bounds. Don't know. Pressure being applied by number 33, Landon Bailey. Never saw a signal for an incomplete pass or... Well, he can't forward, fumble it forward yeah. for yeah, a first I guess, down. I guess they called it an incomplete pass because it went out of bounds way over here on the Cougars' sideline. But it's fourth down, 108 as the play stops. Ball is at the 13 of Mag West, fourth down. They're going to go for it. Dalton looking to throw. He's going to throw out here. Has a receiver that's caught by Leggett. And Leggett goes out of bounds at the 27, 28 yard line. That is plenty for a first down. Clock stops at 103. First and 10 for Meg West up here on 28. It's gone final. Uh, Lufkin has beaten Waller 56 to 13 to clinch third place in the district. First down, shotgun formation for Dalton. Flushed out of the pocket, now he stops, throws it up across the middle, and this is going to be intercepted by the Cougars. And that is going to be Jackson Williams. And Jackson Williams takes it back to the Magnolia West 32. And he got uh, hit pretty hard yes, there at the 32 and fumbled the football, but the Cougars are covered there, and they'll be able to run the clock out. We may have a penalty because the head ref is talking to the side judge. Maybe another war uh, sideline warning? Well, it doesn't really matter because yeah. the Cougars going to line up in victory formation and uh, win uh, this ball game 70-21. to 21. Referees discussing things. Personal foul, number 81 of Mag West. Tony occurred after the interception. He's 15 yards from the end of play. First down conversation. That'll move the down, ball down around the 15 yard line of Mag West. But as you said, Gurgers will be in the victory formation. Take a knee, take it to the house. Close out the regular season on the right note with the 70 to 28 victory. Shotgun formation for victory formation. Yep. Will Henson, Davion Mitchell back there with the quarterback Sampson. Then you have the deep man back there is Jones. And take the knee. And they do not have to snap it again as the Cougars will take the victory in this one and improve their record to 7-1 and one in district, 9-1 and one oh, overall. They, the, they couldn't run the play. They had the – now's the last play that, of the game. They didn't have the, the, the uh, no, they, stick set. They don't have to – they don't have to set it. They don't have – oh, so they never ran They never play? ran first down. Oh, gotcha. But the clock's at – oh, they stopped the clock. So now they will have to snap one, one time. They have to snap one time. Yeah. They didn't have the, the <laughs> stick set. Gotcha. Did not catch that. There it is. Samson takes a knee. That'll be the final play of the game. As the clock's at 10. Five, four, three, 
two, one, ball game. Cougars win it 70 to 28. They're headed to the playoffs next week. They'll be home to take on Sherman. Right now that's tentatively set for Saturday, two o'clock here at Cougar Stadium. College Station now nine and one overall, finished the district at seven and one. They will finish in the two spot behind Magnolia, which wins the district at eight and zero. Oh. But College Station, once again, Scott comes out, takes care of business from start to finish. I, you know, it wasn't perfect. No doubt about it. There'll be some things to work at. I'm sure Coach Huff's got some things to work at, especially the penalties, that yes. uh, the flurry of penalties to start the second half. But the Cougars do get the 70-28 to 28 victory against Magnolia West. Well, I, I just think the way you, you played, uh, really, let's, let's go back to, to Porter uh, because that was a closer ball game uh, for the Cougars. And... After that loss to Magnolia, you beat Porter 24 to 14, and that really jump started the Cougars because the next week against New Caney and then, <laughs> excuse me, on since then, offense and defense have just completely dominated the uh, the better teams, some playoff teams, but you've knocked uh, you've knocked this club out of the playoffs. Magwes is not going to be in the playoffs because. You knocked them out. Waller had been playing pretty good football. You knocked them out. So I just think that the, the way the Cougars take care of their business, uh, they can't be playing any better for Sherman. But we talked about these uh, the playoffs. Uh, Sherman, a third-place team, which basically ties, uh, you know, Longview. Uh, they didn't play that game because of uh, the uh, COVID. But, you know, uh, you, you don't know, and that's two top, uh, a top ten team. So all those top teams in 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 Region Two, you've got to play like you did today to compete, uh, to have a chance to advance, and, and you can't get caught looking ahead to didn't rhyme. That that's for me and you yeah. to be looking ahead. This football team's got to get focused and ready for Sherman next Saturday. Well, afternoon. And, and that's the thing about this team, though, Scott. Is you look at them throughout this season, they have been focused. There's no doubt about it. They have been focused on the opponent. The coaches have done a good job of keeping them focused on the opponent. But you've seen it
try me, boy. I be with my squad. Catching bodies, boy. Yo, we too deep. Talking crazy. That'll get your murk. Coming down the hill. Boy, we real. And we getting turned. And the defense turning up. Now we just ain't got no chill. You know we for real. We turn it when we hit the field. Everybody with us is real. And they going crazy like soon as we run down the hill. That's all you gonna hear when we knocking you out. You thought you was real, but that's not what you bought.